What's up and welcome to another MoGraph MoCast. I'm Dave. And I'm Matt. And joining us today is the biggest Philadelphia Eagles fan in the entire world, whoa, Mr. Whoa, David whoa. Rodeur. <laughs> What's up, everybody? <laughs> And MoGraph is a supplement to our site, MoGraph.com, which is a motion graphics tutorial site with tutorials, plugins, podcasts, and other MoGraph stuff. And on the show, we talk about everything ranging from motion graphics to Cinema 4D, After Effects plugins, render engines, doing business, doing taxes, being a contractor, or working for the Brodeur. And you can email us, <laughs> info at MoGraph.com, and let us know what you think about the show, questions, concerns, <clears throat> comments. We got a lot of emails this week after we went to the Colorado meetup. Yeah, that was awesome. Met that some was, new that friends was there. like a great meetup. EJ yeah, does a really good job out there. Yeah, he does. And I'm so disappointed in myself for not at least bringing an audio recorder to record. You know, our in, in our defense, we didn't know it was going to be that good. Yeah. It kind of it yeah. blew us away. It turned into kind of a Sorry, mini podcast. Sorry, EJ, we, we didn't think that much of you. <laughs> no. We didn't expect that much from you. <laughs> well, we didn't really know it was going to turn into the format that it turned into. It, yeah, it turned yeah. into this like panel Q&A thing with the two of us and... Ariev and and EJ and we were taking questions and talking it just about it, it like rates. rates and stuff like that <laughs> yeah it was awesome yeah Matt was like Matt was like I, I totally think everybody got my... here tonight needs to raise their rates yeah. by fifty dollars starting tomorrow and everybody's like yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> like going nuts well uh, what was great was uh, uh, one of the girls in the audience she came with her boss and she leaned over to him and said all right I'm raising my rate to fifty dollars and he goes I'll give you twenty five. So at least, like, <laughs> she, I mean, you know, you I go. said do it, and it, it was works. like, all right, cool, it actually worked, you know? Yeah, it was really cool. The, it was a great place for it. Uh, David Aryev came up, and he broke down a lot of stuff that he did recently, including that um, beautiful uh, music video with the, with the cool staging and, like, art and stuff, like, behind the dude on the stage. What's the name of that video? Oh yeah, uh, like I can't remember a, the name of it. Oh, <laughs> it, it yeah, a bad either. think is that what the name of the band a, is? I th- a bad think. A bad, yeah. a bad touch. A bad thing. Bad something or other. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. The, feel me. A bad thing. Feel me. That's right. Feel me. Walk with me. Walk. Walk with, away. Walk away. Feel one. me and walk away. <laughs> and save us all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it was so much fun, and we and we went up in the mountains. It snowed. Which, Which was, was amazing. Was Haven't seen snow in years. Really? You guys it don't really get came snow down. in Texas? No, we get We used ice. to. Well, we uh, did before okay. global warming happened. Yeah, we don't global really get it warming. like we did anymore. It's there was weird. that global warming threshold. You yeah. Know, yeah. We finally Dallas went was, over the global warming uh-huh. threshold, and now we don't get da- snow anymore. Dallas was right on the edge like of the, south, of the southern counties that got snow, and so just the last five years or so it just went away yep no more oh well so yeah we had a lot of fun we went up in the mountains and uh we it's weird like the way this stuff comes through like it snowed really hard on us and then the sun came out and everything and we went and mm-hmm. got food and then we went to a brewery and it started just ri- a ridiculous amount of snow like coming down on us like but none of it was it's sticking. that it's that <laughs> it's that light fluffy dry snow it yeah. gets on you, and then you go inside, and then you just kind of like dust off your clothes, and it all falls off. Mm, yeah, I mean, it couldn't have been planned any better. You know, yeah. we're sitting in the the brewery and everything. I'm trying a bunch of beers. It's just coming down Ooh, outside. I'm taking it's a nap nice. in the car. <laughs> yeah. Matt was our driver, so it was the driver drinking yeah. beer when it's snowy. Now well. it's pretty much the ultimate. Oh man, yeah, yeah, it was amazing. And so uh, we had a lot of fun. We we hung out at at EJ's house. Saw Gus Man. Yeah. Play some video games. I saw. Yeah, we did. Yeah, some Switch. <laughs> we played. Uh, we played Towerfall. It's this little game that Aria have introduced us to. Man, it's fun. Mm-hmm. It's super fun. It's yeah. like eight bit and like really fast moving. Oh, cool. We showed off our Camp Mograph videos, and I talked a little bit about the breakdown. On, on a <laughs> and I tried to sell well everyone fun. on Camp Mograph. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. I felt like I, I felt like a straight up just like jerky sales guy. Up there being like, you get camo grab, you get camo grab. Yeah. Hey, do you like it? Oh, we got a lot of videos? interested people. No, but here's the thing that we really liked that format for, yeah. for a meetup. And so now we're considering finding a way to do that at our meetups and other meetups to just go with at least partially that format. Wait, what was the, the format the audience exactly stuck that around. you liked? 
Well, it's, you know, David was presenting like somebody would do at a meetup, but it's the fact that then we kind of, the four of us went up there and started basically doing a mini podcast like this. Yeah. Nice. You know? And, and I, it helps because the four of us, you know, are, are very close and we talk all the time anyway, yeah. so it's very comfortable, you know, when we're, when we're all up there, yeah, we yeah, all yeah. feel a lot less nervous. Yeah. Um, but I, I feel like it, it really hooked everybody. Everybody stuck around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, when you have a whole bunch of presenters, people kind of fizzle out and get tired and, and yeah. maybe there's different levels of people. Maybe there's people that don't understand how to do what David does, but they're interested in what David does and yeah. they want to see it. You know, and then, but maybe they want to hear about the business side and all this other stuff. And everybody stuck around. The bartender said usually uh, people stick around um, maybe about an hour and a half less than they than they did. Yeah, that night. we ran so, the thing about an hour and a half longer than it normally is. And people, I was yeah. very surprised that people actually stuck around. Oh, geez. Yeah, and we saw a bunch of friends too. You know, um, Camp Mograph. I don't know as far as Camp Mograph if we have any updates. Or anything like that, David. You're going, right? Oh yeah, I'm gonna be there. You kidding me? <laughs> it's gonna be fun. Yeah, be fun. I, I like that it's different. You know, it's uh, it's yeah. a, definitely a different kind of kind of spot than than everything else. Um, and if you don't like camping, the beautiful thing is that you don't have to go too. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, if yeah. you want to kind of go and change up the vibe a little bit, if it's not your thing, it's not your thing. But um, it'll be my, if you haven't been camping before. I've never been camping before. Yeah. Never, not <laughs> once. So, um, oh man. So throw yourself out of your comfort zone. I feel like it's the same thing with any anything else, right? To progress and like get into different conversations and whatever, right? You have to put yourself outside of your comfort zone. So I'm doing it. Um, yeah. Yeah, why not? It's going to be fun. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, the fun. big thing is there's only 10 days left of early bird, pr- or uh, no, not 10. Yeah. Uh, like 11, 11 days left 11 of early days. bird pricing. So mm-hmm. uh, if you're looking to save some money, get in there, get your tickets like ASAP because other, and, uh, prices yeah. go up June 1st. And we did, again, we added that community cabin ticket. Yep. So um, if you yeah. don't have a group that, that you can work out to buy an entire cabin, mm-hmm. you, can, you can do the random thing. Yep. If you're, if you're okay with that. So. Yep. And if you never went camping, know that you can hang out with me and we can, uh, we can automatically <laughs> connect on never camping before and seeing how that goes. Yeah. yeah. Or we've also got discounts to uh, local B&Bs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you just mentioned Camp MoGraph, there's a 15% discount from those Airbnb or oh, from those B&Bs. So, That's sick. Uh, those are listed on uh, campmograph.com. So check those out. Well, I'm yeah. doing the whole it's thing. It's going to be... I'm going in for the experience. Going in. <laughs> nice. Although I'm doing a cabin, not a yeah. uh, not a tent. Yeah, <laughs> That's other, right. other than but that, so. I'm doing the whole experience. <laughs> and my cabin's got AC and a fridge, and no. I'm oh, it does. No, I'm just oh, oh, does it now? <laughs> I'm like, what cabin that, are you staying yeah, in? Yeah, mine yeah I know, right? Got cable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A bunch yeah. of 2080 Ti's. Be... You know. <laughs> hopefully it's yeah. <laughs> uh, oh wait, hopefully no, it's I'm not at home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Glamping. So if it gets glamping, no, if it gets cold, we just start uh, doing some renders and uh, heat it up. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I was it looking might at the, be, I was looking at cold. the temperature and like it's yeah. like the average is between like fifty and sixty degrees. That's you perfect. know, during that time. Oh yeah, that is absolutely perfect. That's like you know a uh, a uh, uh, long sleeve shirt and a hoodie. You know, and you're like mm-hmm. solid. Yeah, you know, it's gonna be yeah. so good. It but, might be a little chilly at night, but you know, I think it'll be okay. Yeah, you know, it's that borderline. You know, winter will be coming. Yep. <laughs> and speaking of which, no, are we going to go into any of this? No, we're not going to. Okay. It's way too early for that. It's oh, way too early say. to talk no about No initial this. spoilers. Yeah. No, you can't. You just can't. Yeah. It, people the only will thing tune I guess. Too quick. Uh, the only thing that we could we could ask you at this moment that wouldn't be a spoiler is: Were you satisfied with the series as a whole now or not? Yeah, I didn't subscribe to the whole internet hype of hating on this series. Um, okay. Can I, can I say how I felt about that last episode or no? It's too much. Uh, I don't know. Man, I, won't, I think I won't that's a little thing. borderline. Yeah. I watched the first episode and then I watched the last episode. <laughs> that's and that's worst, all I've man. seen. And I'm really confused <laughs> about how they got there. <laughs> <laughs> you know you usually have to watch the ones in between to figure that out yeah, yeah i know i know it could be a new way of watching shows you right. you watch the first one and the last one we'll see i think uh, Didn't that uh ruin the show th- that ruins the show it's all right 
the thing is like <laughs> yeah. here here's here's the here's here was my big thing. I think Game of Thrones started about the same time The Walking Dead did or something. I want to say there were like two shows that started about the same time and The Walking Dead from what I hear slowly got worse and worse and right. worse and worse Which is and why I don't everyone watch was it. like you know, there's no reason to keep going, you yeah. know? So yeah. I, I was like, all right, you know, because I hear The Walking Dead, the first season is absolutely incredible, you know? But then Game of Thrones, it's like everyone's been like, okay, this is good, this is good, this is good. I, I don't want to get burned. I got burned once on a show called Lost. Yeah. Because yeah, it yeah. was the worst show I'd ever seen as a whole. Yes. It, thank you, G Rant. You're totally right. Yep. I got burned. By <laughs> how Lost ended. Yeah, so, I agree. I agree. I felt like I wasted so. Much. See, I didn't feel that way with Game of Thrones, though. I felt that way with Lost. I watched yeah. Lost, and I was like, I wish I never even started it because of how this went at the end. But I didn't feel that way about Game of Thrones. Yeah. See, I so, feel like anyway. Like I just didn't want to. I didn't want to invest my time if yeah. it wasn't worth it, you know. And so seeing the ending now, I mean, you know, it's cool. I've Maybe heard, I'll I get mean, there I've one day. The spoilers. I'm so annoyed that you watched the last episode of the first episode. <laughs> and that was really a reason why I wanted to do it. Yeah. Like, yeah. because, okay, so for example, Amy, my wife, uh, my wife, <laughs> my wife. <laughs> uh, uh, she had never read a Harry Potter book, right? She read the seventh yeah, Harry Potter book. And that was it. And I was like, what are you doing to yourself? (laughs) Like, this is the best series ever. And it annoys Mm -hmm. me to no end that she's only read the seventh Harry Potter book. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. And so I kind of wanted to throw that annoyance on everyone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You know what? Here's the thing. I do the same thing. I like annoying the hell out of people. That's a good thing. (laughs) Matt and I both haven't seen the show. And I feel like I've gotten so many spoilers already that it doesn't matter. Yeah. At this point. You know... You hear about so and so died and so and so died. It's like I get it. If I watch yeah. this, don't get attached to any characters. And yeah, uh, I don't feel like so many people watch it now. I don't feel like like I could never catch up at this point and not and not have already known about some sort of spoiler. Yeah, yeah. just yeah, yeah. just through you know what? just it, it's society. Funny. Yeah. So like uh, you know the sixth sense. Yeah. How there's the big like you know uh, uh, surprise ending. So mm-hmm. I had skipped what a twist. the sixth sense, uh, uh, and then like maybe like ten years later, like someone actually said the ending to me, and I was like, oh, "That's such a good ending to a show," <laughs> you know? Like I had yeah. no idea. Or, or ending to a movie, I was like, "What?" Da, da, da. Yeah, yeah, Kevin's in the big, chat. He says, "Breaking, Breaking Bad is the best show I've it's ever seen, wire. except maybe The Wire." <laughs> yeah. That's from Family Guy. That's oh, always. Oh, okay. That's always I didn't know the, that was from the Wire. Uh, that was from yeah, Family yeah. Guy. <laughs> yeah. See, Nick says that. Nick says that about The Wire. He says The Wire is like the best show yeah. ever. You know, yeah, but he hasn't seen hear. Breaking Bad. I really like. Now, I, I feel he, like no Sopranos is getting slept yeah. on a little bit. I think Sopranos was yeah, amazing. Right. I think I personally think if you didn't have Sopranos, you might not have had Breaking Bad because oh, yeah? Sopranos was technically, I think, one of the first TV series where you loved the villain, and Breaking yeah. Bad did that same recipe, right? Where it got everyone yeah. to like Walter, and it's like, oh man, he's like actually an evil guy that I, I like. And the same thing went with uh, Tony Soprano. So yeah. Don't sleep on Sopranos. Here's the thing. Afterwards, I guess the Westworld season three trailer came out, and oh my god, if you're a Westworld person, you gotta go watch it. It's, you just gotta go watch. I don't that know. Trailer. It's interesting. I was like, like the the way that they uh, the way that they're playing it. You know, like I I don't know. Yeah, I don't want to go it, into too much detail. Well, I mean, it's it's not really a spoiler. It's a trailer, you know, Uh-oh. so it's it's whatever. But uh, basically, what's the guy's name? Jesse from Breaking Bad. Yeah, Aaron Paul. Uh, Aaron Paul. He, I guess, is like a new main character, it looks like now, yeah. in the actual Maybe. real world. I mean, he may just be on one episode. We don't know. That may just be the first oh, episode of the season. I don't know. I hope, I hope not. I mean, it's now you're in like the real world in the series, which is... Wait, which is awesome so when they didn't label it as westworld oh if you were watching it okay if you're watching it oh live, yeah 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 yeah, yeah grant yeah if you're yeah. if you were watching it you didn't know what you were watching it was so yeah. different until the end and you're like oh crap this is westworld so yeah go watch that if you're a fan <laughs> my my mouth was like dropped open i was like no this is gonna be good yeah 
And also Rick and Morty in November. Holy crap. Yay. Like, it's been announced. It's official. You're a Rick and Morty guy, right? We talked about this before. Yeah, I, I have. Think. I still have not. I've watched, <sighs> I've watched maybe like two episodes. I really enjoyed Dude. it, but. Sorry. Yeah, you got to really like dive into it. To, it's one of those things that. that my wife is not going to watch with me. Oh, I. And, uh, yeah, same and, here. And so I. Right. This is what happens when she goes away on like a trip or a bachelorette <laughs> mm-hmm. party. There's one of two things that I'm going to do. Only two options for me. One is pants I'm just, off. Oh, let me guess. One. Let me guess. Let pants me guess. off. One is <laughs> one is either binge TV shows that she wouldn't watch, or two, sit at your computer and work on personal projects. Yeah. 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 yeah and I just yeah. stay up yeah. all night, or yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Or I'll just crack open a beer and watch movies and TV shows the whole time. Yep. And then act like I did a bunch of stuff. Yep. Yeah. Look at this render I did. Yeah. (laughs) And Grumpy Cat died. Sad. Rest in peace, Grumpy Cat. Press F to pay respects. (laughs) All right. There we go. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, poor Grumpy Cat. Well, now that we've gotten the pop culture (laughs) section of our right of our show. Oh man. You want to talk pop culture? Oh, by the way, so I think we're going to have a little contest for a Camp MoGraph ticket, I think. <laughs> so it's a little yeah. something we're, we're talking about. We're, <laughs> how do we even describe what this I is? Are, are you going to play any of it? Do you are you going to wait? I mean, it's, it's not mixed. I could play some yeah. stems. I, do you I want, don't know. You want, me to li- know. you want me to live mix for a second on the show? Live I can do mix. it. Are, I, I mean, we could. We could. Okay, so anyway. It. Okay. Hold on. Right. Hold on. So let me, okay. let me preface right. this. So, uh, uh, Ariev and uh, uh, Chelsea, his wife, uh, we were all hanging out together in <laughs> in uh, Denver, and uh, they told us a story about how they uh, one night they were getting kind of goofy, you know, uh, uh, you know, like you do, and he started making up this <laughs> this terrible, terrible rap. <laughs> Yeah. And so she got him to record him doing the terrible, it's not even, terrible it's rap. It's not even a rap. It's, it's like not a, a song. Rap. It's like a crappy song. So yeah. Dave decided to go ahead and remix it into this amazing song. Well, I was something. like, I was like, see, we we got to turn this into a song and do the remix, and then we'll we'll take the song, and if you do four to eight bars of it, we'll do a contest. You do four to eight bars of the song. For a ticket to Camp MoGraph, the winner, which one we like yeah. the best. But then we'll string them all together for the music video. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, do you want to hear this? Do you want to hear this go clip? Ahead. It's go ahead. so... Oh, my gosh. Okay, so are you going to play, play the actual clip first? Yeah, right. yeah. All right. Squeeze me with your monkey legs. Squeeze me with your monkey legs, girl. I want to give you a banana. <laughs> That's all the clip was. <laughs> Oh, so anyways, this became the inside joke the whole time we're in Colorado and yeah. like just listening to it and hearing him like try and hold it together while he's saying, <laughs> I want to give you a banana. Oh man, it's so good. Hope I got all the, the, the takes and stuff. <laughs> I, I, so I'm not done. I just started messing what around yesterday. What show become? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, see, Tokyo Megaplex said send, me, send him away. Yeah. yeah. So, so let me show you. I was messing around last night. I'll just, I'll, I'll make this quick. Do it. Come on. Yeah. Live stream. Okay. Because okay. it's not yeah, mixed yeah, or yeah, anything, yeah. you know, so I'll just kind of like, can you hear it? Okay. Yeah. You're can fine. you hear it? Okay. All right. So this is what I was doing last night. I'm doing this all on the fly. I'm just like adding these things here. Yeah. I got to build it up like a real DJ, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's not, you know, it's not too bad. Yeah, I'm nervous because I'm playing in front of Tokyo Megaplex. Right? Yeah. That guy's amazing. He's got the lock on this, you know. <laughs> Gotta add a little rhythm here in a second. Build you up, ready for the drop, you know, all that. There we go. <laughs> this is fire. <laughs> uh, oh, man. All right, here we go. You ready for this? I hope I do this correctly. We 
squeeze me with your monkey legs. 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 Squeeze me with your monkey legs, girl. Squeeze me with your monkey legs. 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 I wanna give you a banana. Okay, that's, that's good, dude. Yeah, <laughs> well done. Yeah, that's where I'm at so far. Take all my money. Yep, <laughs> I'm still learning. Seriously, dude, you need uh, to do our next. That's gonna be our next demo reel music, <laughs> right there. Right. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm actually gonna do something with it and then uh, mm. put it up on uh, online so people can do this contest. I'm thinking like, you know, already I'm thinking like, I mean, obviously it's about a monkey wrapping legs around people so <laughs> yeah i'm thinking like like totally off the wall like i'm I'm thinking you tokyo megaplex with your yeah, awesome dude. like style with like a monkey with crazy legs wrapping around somebody's face i don't know <laughs> i'm gonna be jamming that ideas. song in my car now i'm gonna yeah, throw the, right? <laughs> i'm gonna throw this podcast on just to hear that song yeah bumping oh uh, man i i, I kind of <laughs> talked about this at the meetup actually I'm, I'm having a lot of fun learning stuff that's not graphics because uh and i think actually this kind of goes to a a topic that that you wrote in here david about uh things didn't you say something uh maybe not maybe that was a different (laughs) week but about uh doing things that are not in your wheelhouse industry in your wheelhouse just to kind of get a little creativity from other places or or things like that i don't know it's it's been interesting to to take the way that I learn in graphics and apply it to something else. So, yeah, Pedro says he sounds like Cookie Monster. He does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you could, like, you could expand on that. Like, it could almost be a children's song. Like, you could be like... <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, you'd, you'd have to change the phrase. Well, not the banana. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You could do the different animals, like, scratch me with your tiger paw. <laughs> oh, my God. You know? Like, we could just get him to do all of it. Scratch me with your tiger ball. I think it's going to make a really funny animation if we do a contest out of it, so. Oh, that's funny. That's really funny. Good. <clears throat> all yeah, right. We'll have to write some more lyrics and have him, have him send them over for us. Yeah. Word. Anyway, let's go to motion graphics. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> Let's uh let's you talk gotta about ease we have... into the motion graphics talk. You know, you can't know. just you can't just go. You gotta right start into with it, monkey so. legs. And then, right. Yeah. You gotta get some yeah. monkey legs, yeah, get yeah, a little yeah. loose, and then you know. <laughs> then we give it the banana. Yeah. <laughs> we end with the banana. <laughs> we end with the <laughs> for sure. <Yeah. laughs> uh oh, I don't know what to do next. Let's talk about redshift. All right. And, yeah, and I don't know. I don't know anything about this, but you mentioned it the other day, and apparently I've been living you're gonna, on a you're rock. Gonna throw me right into this. Yeah, uh, Tesla rock. A, <laughs> Tesla rock. A bit of foreplay. No. <laughs> um. <laughs> so there's, uh, Redshift RT, and I am been so over my head and other things. I didn't even hear about it. Yeah. And I don't know anything I, about I don't, it. I don't know enough yeah, about, it about it to about like it actually make a informed decision or anything but I, I th- <laughs> what, what's I think the gist of it though i, I think that's going to be the real-time renderer you know but so I, this I can't like i can't speak for this because uh, uh this isn't a video game thing this is like something for doing motion graphics i don't know I told oh. you, like I just, I that's like great that's, conversation, oh. guys. I love this. Yeah, one. yeah sorry. Yeah, no, good you should let Matt. me know that you were going to do this because right now I'm furiously googling <laughs> right now. Man. So, okay, here, let's just you make some up. stuff up then. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be so Redshift is real time. Uh, yeah. No, uh, I know. It's coming out entirely next week. Okay, thank you, Tokyo. Uh, it's rasterized week. for the first bounce. <laughs> <laughs> and and the following bounces are okay. ray traced with low samples and denoise. De-noise. There you go. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Like a new real time engine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I literally just heard about this, so I'm like, what is going on right now? <laughs> I've been too over my head and monkey legs to even notice. Yeah. But. I mean, we just got back like a day or two. I I just got back yeah. yesterday. Dave just got back Saturday. Yeah. So. 
Uh, it was interesting to see what different people are using for their engines too. I was talking to people in uh, in Colorado. Uh, David, you've been dabbling with Redshift, oh. correct? Yeah, I've been more than dabbling. I think it's like it's like fifty fifty. Uh, it's just a, a coin flip, pretty much, as to what I'm yeah. going to use, whether it's Octane or Redshift. I don't. Yeah, I don't. Oh, you like did a- the grapes thing. Right? Yeah. With the, was that Redshift? Or yeah, yeah, Octane? yeah. That was Redshift. Yeah, that was the oh, first wow. thing I okay. rendered in Redshift. Yeah, um, looked yeah. beautiful. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, oh, no. So since, you have been more than dabbling. Yeah, since since that like moment. Um, yeah, it, it's just like what's the project and whatever the project is is really uh, and what the requirements are for the project and what I think is going to be more useful that just determines what render I'm going to use. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they're both they're both great and better in different circumstances. So. Um, yeah, there, I've hit walls in both, and I'm like, oh, I could have just done this way quicker in Redshift, or I could have done this quicker in Octane. Yeah. Actually, most most of the time, I feel like, yeah, it's um, I guess I could say it's qu- one's quicker than the other in different things, but I seem to hit more a, a, a wall faster in Octane if I want to dive in and like finesse the last ten percent. But a lot yeah. of times, I'm like, I don't need that. I'm very happy, and I'm like, uh, it, but the the problem comes in when like a client wants to art direct to the last 10% and it's like, oh man, I'm, it's going to take me so much longer to tweak this in Octane and then I'm like, I should have used Redshift. So I try yeah. to just like foresee that happening in certain cases and uh, and I'll use Redshift for that. Still, if I just want to yeah. crank something out really fast, I seem to like revert back to Octane. If I'm like, oh yeah. man, I don't, because I still try to do an animation a week and sometimes I'm like, mm-hmm. oh man, I ran out of time and I'm like, oh great, well, I'm just going to knock something out. Um, but yeah. it's becoming more and more pushing Redshift, honestly, I've done a lot more last minute things recently. I really like, um, what is it? Is it, it's like the thin, thin, thin wall or a thin, yeah, um, uh, with the glass. Oh. Yeah, I, yes. I, I use it yeah. a lot to like fake, uh, get like different subsurface scattering too. Um, really? Just really quick. Yeah, I, like, I feel like I'm going to probably start sharing some of my scene files soon, uh, but I use it a ton for like, it makes it subsurface easier for me in a lot of, a lot of cases. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Yeah, that's super cool. Yeah, so yeah, I like yeah. I like that option in there because you know, like if you're working with uh, glass in like a car or something like that, you know, yep, or windows, you know, you don't want to have that the weird R- IOR distortion stuff, you know. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. I was talking to Chad Ashley. <clears throat> he said it was really good for, um, uh, or maybe it was Trevor Trevor Kerr's class, but he was saying it's really good for like paper and and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Yes, like thinner materials that like light still comes through, but it's not like it's not like jello. You know what I mean? It's not going to yeah, yeah, absorb yeah. Okay. in the same way. And that's how they were describing it as really good for oh. that. And I think it was. I think he might have mentioned that in um in the in the course um, that yeah. that it's really good for for that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's. It seems like actually, I think I heard Octane's gonna have that in 2019. I think, I think that mm. was in his deck, in his slide deck. If I'm not Wait. mistaken, maybe I'm wrong. But um, what um, Tokyo's saying in the chat is that you know, hopefully, at some point they're gonna show it off, and SeaGraph would probably be a good place for that. Grant was saying in the chat too that it might be. They're making it sound like it's one of those things where there'll be a switch to to switch from real time Redshift to regular redshift kind of like yeah. what they're talking about doing with arnold where you you can switch between like gpu cpu yeah you know so or you with can ev and cycles yeah and i really like that because then you could sit there and build your animation kind of in a previs kind of way yeah. and then just switch it over when you're ready to render um yep. but i should probably learn redshift before that point you don't you yeah. don't know redshift yeah. yeah i mean i i mess around with it but i don't know it know it i don't feel comfortable the way mm-hmm. I do with Octane, anyway. So yeah. I yeah, need to I take mean, one of those I'd courses. Yeah, myself, I mean, I still don't but... feel as comfortable with Redshift as I do Octane, but that's only because I've been working on Octane for years. Yeah, exactly. You know? Same here. But like, I'll jump yeah. into a client project with it. Like, whatever. Like, what's the word? Like, you'll figure it out. I mean, yeah, we exactly. use enough stuff yeah. that it's like, yeah, we got it. Yeah. What was your about, process? Like, it's this was something that we were. Hold on, if I can jump in real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, this is something we were talking about with uh, Phil. Because Phil's new uh, uh, mm-hmm. the Octane car shaders, he's porting over to Redshift, yeah. and you know he was saying that you know it's not one to one like as far as what you're like the 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 nodes and everything, but the concepts are exactly the same, you know, and that's important to know when yeah. moving over to any sort of render engine or any anything like that is that 
you may not know which nodes or what buttons to press, but you know the concept. If you know the concept, you know, then you know how to get from A to B. Yeah. It's I important def- to know. That's why it's important to know the, the fundamentals yeah. of what you're doing. Yeah. You know, I, I definitely thought it was going to be harder to jump into Redshift um, just based on like the way people described it and all these different settings and extra buttons. And I don't know. I didn't think it was at all. Like I played with it for one and I'm not like a super tech guy. So like, don't, mm-hmm. don't think mm-hmm. like, oh, it's like, oh, he uses whatever and always figures it out. It's like, no, no, I hate tech. I, and that's why I liked Octane so much. I was like, <laughs> You know, barely any settings to change. I'm like, I love this just for me. But I jumped in the Redshift, and I, it just wasn't all that confusing. I was like, oh, there's a lot more hype around it being more difficult to use than I really thought it was. So, yeah, you know, I recommend it. I'm guessing you're probably uh, pretty good with nodes to start, though. Right? I, I I got I really like nodes, but I was very hesitant to use use nodes for a while. I mean, even when I started using Octane, I was still using like the the kind of folder or tree hierarchy or whatever you want to call it um, in the standard like Cinema 4D materials. And it took me a while. If you watch a handful of the beginning Grayscale Gorilla tutorials I did, you can see I'm still mm-hmm. using like the, the layering system. And I, I'm mm-hmm. like, man, those tutorials are so crappy because I chose to do that rather than nodes. Once um, I like the layering system. Yeah, a yeah. lot of people ask me about that because the old tutorials i have are like that i'm like sometimes my head just wraps around the layering system or or whatever better yeah. in my yeah, head i think if it's a basic for me for me if it's a basic setup mm-hmm. the layering is still like easier if i just want to do like a simple like rgb color or something like that it's like mm-hmm. yeah i don't need to but outside of that it's really kind of nice especially just being able to like for instance if like you download any materials from like uh polygon or any of those kind of sites and they give you the whole mm-hmm. like l- layer like just being able to select all of them in the folder and drag and drop it into the node tree and it's like boom they're, yeah. they're all right in there and like it, it's speeds yeah, up the workflow nice. and that's mostly the materials that i'm making i, I do like m- maybe 80 percent 70 percent those type of materials and the and the rest are like just from like scratch you know so yeah i don't know i i really do like uh working working with nodes it's just easier yeah. for me to see i don't have to like toggle open folders and like if you're working on a team with someone and they give you one of their materials it's really easy to open the node layer and see yeah. how everything's piped in rather than like oh this is nested <clears throat> in a folder which is nested in a folder which is it's like uh, yeah so yeah it's a little bit easy to wrap your head around yeah i can see that there's there's also like this thing in the industry where i don't know maybe over the last five or six years there's a lot of people who have entered the industry straight into Octane, which yeah. wasn't really a node-based thing. And there's a lot of people that just didn't even start with nodes. Whereas, yeah. you know, somebody like us, maybe we worked in nodes and other programs. I never Nuke worked or, in nodes. No, me neither. I didn't work know. in nodes until, like, more in-depth Octane stuff. Actually, no, until I started dabbling in 3DS Max, you know? Mm. See, I learned nodes in, uh, what is it, Apple, what was it called? Was it called Shake? No, what was it called? Shake. I don't know. Was it Shake? It was the Apple compositing tool that was like they bought it. It was a Unix. Was it called? I why don't I remember the name of it now? I don't remember. I think it was called. It, it's basically no. It was it was more. It was like Nuke, but it was a compo- Shake. I, th- I don't know. I, th- I think it was called Shake. That has been so long, but that's where I learned because. Um, you know, they had a a book and stuff like that that came with it, and you had to, you know, it was back when you actually had to read. See, okay, it is Shake. Bill says yeah. it is Shake. Man, it's been so long. But yeah, that's where I learned Nodes, and like, I opened Nodes in there for the first time, and then it was one of those things where you open it and you close it. <laughs> You're like, yeah. nope, I don't understand this, you yeah. know? Uh so yeah, I mean, wild. I was really reluctant to learn nodes. I I like fought against it, and uh, and then mm-hmm. I'm just like, you know, I got to see what the hype's all about. And and if you just jump in and instantly you're like, no, it's like you're not really giving it a fair shot. You get it's like moving from a mouse to a um to like a Cintiq or a tablet of some sort, yeah. right? And it's like the yeah, same yeah. thing. It's like you gotta you gotta put the time in for a couple weeks, and then you get used mm-hmm. to it. Because I mean, I, I've still used like the, the the regular layering order, like far more than I ever had nodes uh, still and I just think nodes are better um, and now I can't get myself off Cintiq I, like, I'm like I gotta use a mouse yeah. now so you gotta give yourself time <laughs> like on it. Like a poor person? Yeah <laughs> like a peasant No, Bill, they're, they're yeah, Bill. they are expensive though Bill in the chat he's like you know Apple bought it and, and killed it and all these studios had invested their pipeline in it it was this Unix thing you know and 
uh, it was it it was kind of a standard for a lot of people at the time. <laughs> mm. And then Apple, like they do, they bought it and killed it. So Apple, you know, Tokyo Megaplex yeah. says you go from not to nodes to nodes is the same as nodes to codes expressions. See, every t- <laughs> you guys have been doing that a lot lately where you do like from this to this and I'm always like <laughs> not nodes is greater than nodes, which is also yeah, equal. an arrow. That's my that's <laughs> my uh that's my uh algebra background. Yeah, <laughs> right. You know. Yeah, Bill. Earth, well, let's Billy's- see if I if I divide nodes greater than codes expression <laughs> by not nodes greater than nodes, I can cancel out the nodes and I Are get you not correctly? nodes <laughs> not nodes <laughs> o- is over Codes, uh, uh, codes, expressions. What's oh yeah, no, because there's a there's a division yeah. of codes and expressions, right? So please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Bill. Early signs of a- Apple's lack of commitment to the pro market. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. <sighs> Which are we? Well. Are you mentioning that uh, that other thing? Is that in Dave's links? The Apple. The, the, oh yes it is it is okay. we'll get to that okay. yes um all right so i wanted to get to some topics first let's do it and let's do some this topics is, yeah so this is um i've been looking at david at your instagram yeah, yeah i was looking yeah. at it in the car the other day because we were driving up to colorado and um i gotta say fire fire sign fire sign fire sign oh, sick. <laughs> cool work and he's bro. not just a bot he's not just a <laughs> yeah. bot telling you that how much of that do you get do you get just a ridiculous amount of bots just posting? You know, I, I don't. I don't get uh, tons of bots. I, I. I don't think you know. All my people are quality. Yeah, I don't know right, what yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, when you pay when you pay for them, you want you you expect top dollar. So. <laughs> right. Um, That's funny. There's there's um a lot of comments that I notice because we post things that aren't necessarily a render, and people follow us because they think that we're an account that just posts renders. So See, I'll yeah. post what, what's the uh, intention? advertisement. Like what? What are like bots trying to do? What's like the purpose? Like why would it be like that? Renders well, well, fire okay. and then like it's I, not. I, they're I not actually bots. This. They're not. I know bots. about this. Um. Uh. Uh. There's so we Nick and I created a cartoon a long time ago. Um. And we started getting a ton and ton of likes after not doing it for a while. We got a ton and ton of likes of people from the Philippines, and it's like. Mm-hmm. That's kind of weird. Yeah. So like, you know, you start to look at the people who are liking them and it's like, these are totally fake accounts. Mm. So these fake accounts, because like other people are buying likes, you know, they have to have, um, they have to like other things that are similar to it in order to trick Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or whatever into thinking that they're real accounts. Mm. There's yeah. also a lot of real accounts doing this, though, and, and I've looked at it, and I think what's happening is your account gets a little more, quote-unquote, notoriety in the system if you are commenting on more things and liking more things, and you're more active, and I think people are using these so systems dumb. that do auto-posts, you know? So anything that has the hashtag every day, then, well, uh-huh. and, and, and MoGraph, then you post you know, that render is fire. So when I post an advertisement for Camp MoGraph and it's just a picture of someone's face with their name and then they put, that render is fire, yo. I'm like, okay, you're a real person, but you're just doing this because you're trying to game the system. Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. annoying. Yeah, okay. Maybe. I see it for that. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. I think it's a, you know, obviously if you're an artist and you're buying likes and followers, that's like stupid, like, I don't understand the purpose of that one uh, two like if, yeah. if your end goal was because it's not like they're gonna buy anything from you no they're you know, not gonna buy anything. to sell something and like mm-hmm. if you want to get like paid on instagram like i'll just be straight up like those companies can see that you do that like a hundred percent they can see if you've mm-hmm. like promoted something or if you've bought followers and likes and stuff like that and then they you won't get you won't get hired for stuff too so yeah interesting yeah yeah I, i've done how a can they see that though um, well, a lot of them require access. Like if they're going to start paying you for like different posts and stuff like that, um, they get access to like your analytics and all that. And 
And they, I, I mean, maybe they were BSing me, but so they could probably see like where the likes are coming from, I guess, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm not a, yeah, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I didn't really care because I didn't buy anything, so I was like, okay, yeah, yeah that's fine. You guys can check it out. Um, but yeah, I would just say be cautious about anyone that's doing that. And then it's like, I don't know. I, I guess it's a weird thing to just like want to hype auditor by like hype like auditor just, just create work who cares if pe- like my stuff has highs and lows and that's just how it goes like if you're not getting a lot of attention yeah. doesn't mean your stuff sucks it's you know like so like some stuff i'll do i'll get like ten thousand likes and then something else i'll do like get like i don't even know like like under a thousand it's like i don't care man why would, I, i've never set out to do something on instagram because i wanted likes and followers i set out right. because i wanted to make something for myself and i think that's kind of the most important takeaway like don't wow. put too much energy into like the hype of likes it's about it should never creating art mm-hmm. should never be about that it should be about how does it better you so if you look exactly. at this hype, hypeauditor.com, right, you can type in an Instagram or whatever. Yeah. Look at Chloe Kardashian. She's got 64.8 million uh, quality followers. What does that oh, mean? This is interesting. Like, quality, though, is probably like people so that she's comment got and like on her stuff. 93 million followers, but authentic engagement is 1.2. That's crazy. God. I want to see how many we have. Let's see. What's our Instagram? Yeah. Camograph. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah, yeah you can type mine in. I don't care. <laughs> One can, quality can, person. Oh, they have to have at least a thousand followers. Dang it. Yeah, you can type mine yeah, in. Yeah, we just opened that account. Is it just locked and loading? Yeah. Let's see. Let's let's see how much fake stuff I have going on. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, you got a lot of followers. Uh oh, we're gonna we're gonna call you out, dude. Uh, you're gonna be like, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't care. I got nothing to hide. <laughs> Yeah. All right. What so, does that mean? man, one hundred sixteen thousand yeah. followers. Did so, you get that from? Uh, did you get that? Because I've seen a few of your posts hit the front page of Reddit a few times. Yeah. Did you get a big influx from that? I don't know. I the I remember like Reddit was like a couple years ago. I and who knows? I'm not on Reddit, so my stuff could pop up there more often than I even know. But it was like two years ago. It was like the last day I did my 365 day everyday thing, um, mm-hmm. and uh, and it was. I posted like an animation that day for the final one, day 365. And then like I had a couple mm-hmm. people be like, yo, your th- stuff is blowing up on uh, on Reddit. I don't remember getting a whole lot from it though. Like, uh, um, yeah. you know, but like over the course of that, that year, it like jumped up. It was like, cause prior to like that, it was like 30K or whatever. And then it just kept jumping up. And now I've pretty much like plateaued. And honestly, like I lose way more followers than I get anymore. So. Um, oh yeah oh ton ton it's not even it's not even close <laughs> yeah they're like oh what is this gross unfollow yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah it's like I have every time i show my wife your stuff <laughs> she's like ew that's gross gross i don't want to see that i've got a couple ideas right now for some like even grosser stuff that's gonna that's gonna nice. start happening soon but uh um, nice. alien bugs gross yeah yeah um but yeah no i mean who cares who cares i'm losing followers who cares <laughs> So what do you right. think about these accounts that repost art? Some of them with permission, some of them not, but Yeah, I saw a conversation going on on Twitter like a little while ago about that exactly of like, you know, because what it does is driving traffic away from your page, you know. It's like if you're an mm-hmm. artist and, and and lots of artists like want them. And and I don't really know the answer, but I th- thought it was like an interesting conversation to have and hear what you guys think too, but like if you're an artist and you have like five or, or let's just like a hundred followers or whatever and you're like okay this other account has got a hundred thousand and you're like if they repost my art people are then going to click on the link and come to my page but from what i've heard is that that doesn't really happen like people are just going to continue following the the reposting page and they're not really going to come to your page and, and follow and i've kind of noticed that for mine too when mm-hmm. people repost i don't then all of a sudden get a bunch of followers you know uh you might get a couple but um but yeah. the page that's reposting posting gets a bunch and gets a ton of stuff and you'll see that like you'll see like they've reposted and they've got the the repost page has got like a hundred thousand views on a on a video and then yours has got um you know like 
two two hundred or something like that. You know, it's, yeah. it's mm-hmm. so I don't know. It seems to me like they're probably taking away from the actual artist getting getting a lot of traffic driven to their page rather than the, than the opposite. I don't know. What do you guys think? I, I feel like. If I'm personally looking at something and I'm going through, I'm not even paying attention to who it belongs to. Yeah. If I've added some account that I didn't even realize, I guess, does that, I'm like, oh, that's cool looking stuff. And I add them and then it kind of comes down the pipe again. I'm not really looking at those crazy, like deep comments to see, oh, well, this is actually someone else's work and here's the link. And then you click on that and then you follow them. I don't do that. I don't think anybody else does. Yeah. Yeah. See, I just use Instagram for pictures of my dog. (laughs) <laughs> like I, I literally only have a hundred followers because yeah and I, I have my stuff on private i have everything on private i don't want people yeah. from high school finding me <laughs> why what did you do man i hate i hate high <laughs> high school was stupid i hate it <laughs> you know i didn't want to be there while i was there and then once i was done it's like all right i never want to see you buttholes again <laughs> <laughs> Well, for those who actually do have open accounts yes. and actually are posting quality stuff, here's, here's the other thing. I noticed this about you, David. You have this account and it's just your renders. Yeah. yeah. Just your renders, right? And like we have the MoGraph.com Instagram, but like we're posting, here's a meetup we're doing. Here, It's yeah. kind of used for a different purpose. And then it's like, well, okay, well, what if I have a render now? Where do I put that? Before, I might put it on BroGraph, you know, and I'm like, do I mm-hmm. want to put it on the MoGraph account now, or do I want to, like, really yeah, get see, my I wouldn't personal put it in the Twitter MoGraph and one. stuff going? Yeah, see, yeah. I may get a, a, a Matt Milstead artist one. I just don't do enough dailies, you know? Yeah. Like, I got David, too much you going have, on like, with MoGraph.com and Camp MoGraph to right. keep up with. Yeah. How am I going to do I'm, a daily? Yeah, and I'm making don't tell that to Mike over man. here. People Sorry. will rip you up. For I got that. 15 minutes. I just won't take a crap that. Yeah, day. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but David, what about your personal? Inst- do you have a personal Instagram no. that you use, just like snap and photo? So this is. I did. I, guess I did not have good... another one before I did um, the uh, like the animation stuff. Um, when I was doing a lot more like industry, like, like working in a studio, not like remotely, um, I would leave mm-hmm. every day and I would go and take like a photograph and edit it and post it up. Um, and I did that for a little while, and then uh, and then I dropped that, and then I just started doing the animation. But no, you you won't find me anywhere on social media with any personal stuff. Uh, on Facebook, I mm-hmm. have I had I had to create an account just so I could have a, a business page. Um, but mm-hmm. the on, if you go to my account. I've got zero followers. Uh, I'm following zero people. And on there it says, I don't use this account. If you want to keep up with my stuff, follow my business page. Um, so I don't do any any personal stuff whatsoever on, on online. None. It's too much mm-hmm. of a- How is your family supposed to know what you're up to? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't care, man. They or can what keep you up ate with my that work. That, that's yeah. what I'm up to, my work. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. client work, personal work, and uh, and if they and, and my family's always welcome to come stay with me, so there you go. Or I, I'll go <laughs> visit them. Yeah. You want to find yeah. out about my work, about my life? Yeah. Just and I'm, I'm cool with people who do the personal yeah. stuff. That's fine, too, but uh, I, I, I am looking from it from like how much time I have in a day and uh, and for me it's not that uh, beneficial for for my business or my career to be wasting time with like personal stuff um, that my personal stuff is like the, I remove myself from technology to enjoy my personal life um, and then and then anything that I'm back on technology it's a hundred percent for work um, so yeah I don't know hmm. good or bad there you go. <laughs> You've got a, a note here too about not needing to not needing MoGraph full time to be successful. What is that? Yeah, yeah. I I have so many people that that are like working um, in a business and and they have a family. A lot of it is when when someone's got a family, they feel this way um, and they they're like they're somewhat happy, somewhat not at their full time job, and they'd love to do like MoGraph full time and animation, three D or two D or whatever, um, but they can't take that jump right that that risk mm-hmm. and uh, of being like i'm going full-time mograph and and maybe they're just average too you know what i mean because they haven't put that much time into it um so they're like yeah hey, i might not get work and they might be right that might be a pretty valid like uh opinion or perception mm-hmm. and um 
my thought on it is that like you don't have to do this full time to enjoy it and love it you know it's it's like hey wake up early you know on a saturday or a sunday or or work late when when your kids or whatever wife's in bed or husband's in bed and and uh and and, and work on it then and and do a lot more personal work right and and you mm-hmm. really can you know start off just mediocre and just keep practicing and doing it and, and then getting better and better to a point where you will get traction in this industry. Yeah. I feel like this industry is not this a biased industry at all. We it look sounds at, like you're saying it doesn't have to be just a job. It could be a hobby. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Who'd have thunk it? A hundred percent. 3D animation is a hobby. Yeah. And you know what? If you get enough time in your hobby, you're going to get good at it. And then yeah. eventually maybe you can. And, and it's a seamless transition when you have enough people knocking on your door and saying, and you know what? Like I, I do a lot of different jobs and sometimes I'm straight up with clients. They're like, hey, can you work on this project? We'd love to have you on whatever we like your work. And it's like, I definitely can. Here are my hours for today and this week Mm -hmm. and if you can't do that then that's i totally respect that and maybe another one and i would say 10 out of 10 times i've never had a client say oh well if you can only do if you're if you can't start working for us until 12 p.m every day then we we can't have you on the project they've never turned it down yeah if if they're being that you know micromanagement about it they're probably people you don't want to work with anyway. Yeah, and I can understand like some studios, they're like, mm-hmm. well, no, we have our meetings. We want to go over every project at 10 a.m. or something like that. And I'm like, all right, I get that. Well, you know, if you don't want to work with me, I won't be doing that. And um, and that's fine. Some jobs just won't be right. So like, don't, you know, if like manage it around your other schedule and see, see how it works out. You might only get three jobs a year instead of 30, but you're still doing it. You're still in the industry. And slowly but surely you might, you might break through and then can do that for full time but I, I i always feel bad for artists that that are like hey well, i can't leave this company because i get health insurance they pay me well but i'd love to do animation full time and it's like well start off like just work harder and like do more personal projects one thing will lead to the next the industry responds to yeah. good work and then like all of a sudden you made new connections and you're getting work yeah plus you can you know you can still spend time with your family and stuff like that yeah. like when Amy and I are laying in bed watching TV. What's going to stop me from grabbing my computer and just playing around? Yeah. You know, I'm still yeah. spending time with people, even though, you know, it's no different than just being with them and being on my phone, yeah. you know? Yeah. Or, yeah. Watching TV, whatever. Yeah. It's just in the same room. Having you a, good, get a, lot. a good spouse really mm-hmm. helps, right? You know, having a good yes, spouse right. really does help, you know, yeah. someone that like respects like the the kind of time that's put in. So I could see how it could be difficult if you had, mm-hmm. a, you know, a significant other that doesn't want you doing the extra stuff. Like, you know, that would suck. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but mm-hmm. you yeah. know, maybe mm-hmm. maybe you find a different person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a whole nother story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a whole nother yeah. story. So what about your instagram and and just all your social in general do you get people coming to you for jobs from the social media stuff yeah yeah i don't reach out at all i i've done zero legwork marketing work trying to get hired at, at studios and i realized that like i've been in the industry now i graduated in 2010 so i've been in the industry for now for nine years i understand that like if you're an artist and you've only been in the industry for like two three four years and this is not happening don't feel discouraged it, like it wasn't that yeah. case for me either but like after being in there for a while like I, i've got enough um like people that know me and have done enough studio projects and and then and like and then obviously like having like a, a bunch of instagram followers helps too but um yeah like I, I don't do any kind of marketing i thought i was going to have to when i moved to uh florida i was like okay i'm gonna have to do a ton of industry uh work and i'm not gonna be able to get any um and but it just hasn't been that way. I, I just get reached out to pretty pretty frequently. So I think the key is like hit as many social uh, platforms as possible. Um, you need to be posting on Behance. You need to be posting on Twitter. You need to be posting on Facebook. Um, what else? Uh, uh, keep your website updated. Keep your reels updated. Yeah. You know, put it all out there. You know, because for a while I was getting tons of work from Behance, like right before Instagram. Now I'm getting tons from Instagram. I get reached out to a lot on on Twitter and stuff like that as well. What about linkedin i don't really go on linkedin anymore i've got my, my like, page but no one no one goes on linkedin yeah i don't delete that crap <laughs> yeah i mean but you know who knows that's the thing like what if what if instagram dropped off tomorrow and twitter dropped off 
one can only hope. right but you know <laughs> if that's the case you know you'd be happy that you're keeping these other things up to date yeah so i think it's really important and and i should do that on on uh, linkedin maybe i'll go back in and and keep my profile updated and because like, i don't even know it probably says i'm working somewhere that i'm not anymore and haven't been for a while <laughs> yeah people are like, congratulating me on a work anniversary and i'm like oh, i haven't been there God, in three years um so yeah. i actually uh, uh linkedin is so i've got a, a buddy in new york who has zero social networking anything and the only thing he has is a LinkedIn, and that's the only way I could get a hold of him. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> It's yeah. just by hitting him up on LinkedIn. But I think the takeaway is like, you know, keep everything updated. You never know what client's yeah, yeah. going to look where. You never know who's going to be influenced on what platform. And it's like, yes, all of us artists are doing a lot of more stuff on Behance and on uh, Instagram right now. But there's going to be a lot of people who aren't like from the the same kind of mentality that we are and maybe they're going to be looking through um you know something more yeah. like uh, linkedin and i've got hit up you don't by big know clients that how way. the algorithm is going to hit in your favor and at what point and on what platform yeah someone who's more yeah, business oriented it's not going to be searching for artwork on um instagram they're going to maybe look you up on, on right. linkedin and i've gotten jobs from linkedin from some pretty right. big companies and they know nothing about art they're just handling a budget so yeah how do you vet people that come to you from these different platforms just you know just randomly and and skip the people who are like oh man your stuff is fire i'd really like to collaborate aka can you do free work for me yeah and you know, so how do you i filter that i feel like so i was chatting with some some people at uh, nab this year about it and just kind of how i've kind of sort of vetting that a little bit and i i get bombarded with Yo, how much for a three minute video? How much for this? How much? And it's just like, oh my gosh, like I'm going to waste all my time. I try to respond back to everybody. Um, and then, like, mm -hmm. what if this is a serious job? You know, how do you figure mm -hmm. that out? Right. So, this has worked. It, would it be easier to, like, is there an easy way to vet people by just saying, hey, if you're interested in my work, email me at blah, 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 blah. If you're interested in know about pricing, email me. Yep. Because I, I guarantee you, the ones who aren't serious, they're not going to email yep. you. Yep. You, you know, you that. know? that's 100% what I was going to yeah. say. So, like, what I do is I've got uh, my, my wife is is my producer also she helps like manage nice. a, a lot of those kind of emails and stuff like that for me and like and help help me vet the the process there um of like weeding people out and uh and so i'll have a generic copy paste thing when people hit me up i say hey thanks for thanks for contacting me or reaching out to me or whatever uh please contact uh uh, uh brit uh at whatever uh brit at locked and loading dot com uh for uh to, to further collaborate or something like that and i think yeah it takes out like 90% of the, so if like you, and like I, I've seen them on popping up on Twitter, people like, oh, this person wants this video or whatever. How do you stop these come, from coming in? And then if you don't respond, they'll like, right, question mark, question mark, question mark, like after yeah. a week and it's like, dude, come on. You know, you know, you're just like, you're just trying to get a, a quote here and like you could never afford to pay for what this would cost. And so, you know, yeah. uh, that, that knocks it out. Oh, Chad Ashley. I love you too, Chad. Chad Ashley. I love David Brodeur. <laughs> I'm blushing. I'm blushing. So there are a lot of people that will hit us up and have hit us up over the years, or me even back in the day when I was doing, you know, a full-time job, but I had kind of a side thing going, and they'll say, uh, how much for a music video? That's what they would ask me. Yeah. That was the standard question, like, back about five to ten years ago. Hey, how much would you charge for a music video? Yeah. And it's just like, dude, like what kind of music video and how long are we shooting? Is there animation and all of that stuff? And the thing that really, for me, just made people disappear is by saying, well, I'm, a music video for me is going to cost you a minimum of $10,000. Yeah. Because no matter what it is, it probably is going to start at $10,000. Yeah. You yeah. know, gear or animation or whatever it's going to be. Do you have... Do you send them an exact? I mean, do you send them a at least a price range for people that are? No, I hate giving out prices because I feel like people are just trying to grab information and they're not really interested yeah. at all. So it's, I feel like it's just a, a waste of my time anyway. I feel mm -hmm. like they're just straight up wasting my time. They're I I feel like they've got like a hundred bucks. You know what I mean? Like yeah, and, exactly. And so I don't I don't I don't give it the satisfaction to even give them a price. I, and mm -hmm. that's probably some weird personal thing I've got going on. But no, they don't get a price from me. Because my thought was like you could even send them to a web page that had pricing details or something. Yeah, you know, but I'm not their Google. If, you, know, you know, go do that. Them go do that yourself. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's you're wasting my time. I'm not. I'm not yeah. here to answer these questions. 
And people get upset too. Oh yeah. They're like, oh come on, man. Come on. Can't you can't we just like collaborate on something? It's like, but dude, like you wanna you want me to just do all this stuff for free for you and I don't even know you? Yeah. It's really <laughs> yeah. weird. I don't even know you exactly. Yeah, I mean It's not like it's, you know, David Aryev and I'm making him a, a deep cut of monkey legs. <laughs> You know, just for fun. Exactly. You know, because we're friends and it would be funny. But, uh, like, just random internet people wanting favors. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And on the flip side, you know, I, I kind of feel bad because, you know, some people are, are also trying to, trying to like, boost their, their own work up or something like that. And, and they want to collaborate on, yeah, on a networking Absolutely. level. And, like, I get a lot of people who do audio that are like, hey, you know, anytime you need audio. And, like, they're offering their, their stuff, their services for free. And, like, and like I, I yeah. you know, I get that. I feel bad for that. But um, it, just, it just becomes overwhelming, so... And and I have I tried get a to lot of emails about with, audio. Yeah, I've had tried to collaborate with some audio people, and it totally bombed. So it's kind of mm-hmm. it's kind of turned turned me off on it. Where like you know I, I then give them something, they're like, oh, I thought it was going to be like a shorter animation, and and it's just like, I mean, that's cool. That's like you don't have to do it, but you know. Yeah. I mean, I don't feel like if I needed audio for something that i would just go to a random stranger and say hey will you make me something for free yeah no yeah. i wouldn't either. i feel like i would approach somebody and say hey i've got some money and is this enough to do this or you know i would at least ap- yeah. approach in a way that's like makes it seem like i'm serious yeah about it if i'm actually serious have you guys ever heard of um it's called zelig sounds z-e-l-i-g you should check them uh-huh. out. They, they, when you when you see their website, you're like, oh yeah, I've watched literally everything they've made or like done audio to. Um, mm-hmm. And they had reached out to me back in like 2000, I would say maybe 2012, maybe 13, 2012 probably. And they had like barely any work, and they were just like, did one of those things, hit me up on Vimeo, right? And we're like, hey, any if you want to do any kind of personal project or whatever. And I had just done one called Identity, Tran- Identity Transmute uh, with uh, Gr- like Grayscale Gorilla had posted up on their blog, so it like blew up, especially in 2012. And, um, and so they saw that and they're like, hey, let's do something. And then I hadn't gotten, like nothing happened for a while. And then I did my, um, the, an animation for Pause Fest a couple years back and uh, my ocular uh, piece. And they did, they, they, they hopped on, but like I, and they did it for free. They were super cool. Super, um, it's a, a male, female uh, studio and they do killer, killer audio. And yeah, I wouldn't have, I'm looking at their stuff. It's really Yeah, good. it's epic. They got a lot of big names. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. Yeah. And since then, they've, they've done so much stuff with like Man vs. Machine and all that mm-hmm. um, and tons of Nike stuff and you name it. But, um, you know, they, uh, they they knocked it out of the park. But I was I felt comfortable like hitting them up and being like, hey, like it was like somewhat last last minute too, not really last minute, but like short deadlines if you're a busy studio. And I was like, hey, I'm doing this personal project. Would you guys still be into it? And they did. And they didn't like charge for it or anything, which I thought was cool because I wasn't getting paid for the pause fest animation either so um yeah yeah but yeah i mean so like it doesn't fully hurt to reach out to people but if you're a visual artist and you feel like your social media is getting bombarded with like requests from like hey i'm a rapper how much for a video or hey with such and such can i get how much for a one minute logo animation it's just straight up i mean just send them if you don't have like an alternate email just send them yours and say contact and give them a different name so and so at this email address for uh for quotes and further information about the project mm-hmm. and they never respond they it stops right there because they're not actually serious about it and and that way you don't waste your own time yeah <laughs> yeah because it, what might it be then... fun is like uh if you get those emails or something and you know like they're not going to pan out or something like having some sort of automated email every week saying hey just checking in to see if this is gonna if we want to work on this blah blah, blah <laughs> and annoy them in the same way that they annoy you with the stupid yeah, questions. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like the guy who, a couple of years ago on the Cinema 4D subreddit, but like came in there and started getting mad because nobody wanted oh, to help him yeah. on a project He's like, for free. Fine, I'm going to learn cinema myself and it's going to be yeah. awesome. And you guys will see it's, it's going to be great. Yeah. It's going to be the best thing. And you'll be so jealous that you didn't mm-hmm. help. Yeah. yeah. You're going to be so jealous. And Cinema 4D is like so easy to learn. I'm just going to do it. <laughs> And I'm like, okay, that's cool. I started checking in on him every couple 
months <laughs> just in the sand. <laughs> see the hey, age. how's that project going? And now his account's just gone. Yeah, that's funny. You know, it's like, it's not that easy. Like, I have a lot of respect for people in other industries. You know, you, you dive into Cinema 4D every day, and then you're like, oh, well, this is easy. You click this button and this button and this button, and you do your thing. But, like, sitting down in front of Ableton or something where it's, like, something so easy, like, how do I hear this note right now? It's not playing correctly. There could be, like, a yeah. hundred different reasons. And your mind isn't, like, doesn't, hasn't mapped out a, a path, a signal path inside of Ableton yet, if you're brand new at it, trying to figure out how all this stuff works. And so... You know, I have a respect for people that do other crafts and are really, really good at it. And, and like, I, I don't feel like I would treat people the same way in turn. And I don't understand. So I don't understand why. Is it, maybe it's just our industry. How do you maybe learn to do easy. How do you make that? Well, you press a button about 10,000 times. Right. And then you're pretty good at it. Yeah. And then the whole thing about being a good designer comes into play somewhere along. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, I see that all the time. Yeah. Too. That's a hard thing about about 3D that I think so many artists gravitate towards 2D, especially now there's a big 2D fad. But it's because yeah. it's like it's almost yeah. a path of least resistance. And I'm not trying to say like there's obviously some very technically challenging things about 2D. And like if you want to start getting into cell animation, stuff like that. But it's almost easier to like cell animate like someone walking than it would be to make that in 3d you know there there's something that's like a little bit less like you still have to know how to do character walk cycles and stuff like that in both yeah. mm -hmm. however like there's no rigging waiting like all that. then we're we're going to talk about material creation it's not just like you know you can't just pick the color and, and paint it like you could in photoshop it's like all right we got to talk about reflection and materials and bumps and normals and and so there's just so much to learn you know and, and anytime i teach like a an intro to cinema 4d course it's always like all right what are we going to learn first because it's like we make something yeah and then it's like okay well we have to talk about segments and polygon count and we also have to talk about render settings and lights and shadows and it's just so much i can it's really can be overwhelming and it's really hard when you've been doing it for a while to remember that like okay so it's not like you can just add a material to a, a, a shape and be like that's perfect it's like well now you got to render it and now what does it look like rendered well it doesn't look good because your yeah. lighting doesn't look good and it doesn't look good because mm -hmm. your render settings aren't good or it's flickering so you just have to learn so much to to get going um and that's mm -hmm. why a lot of young artists they get discouraged using 3d really quickly because they're so used to that instant um like gratification or satisfaction that they see in like 2d or after effects it's like hey what i made is what that's the end result right there where when you start doing 3D, it's like that's not it. You gotta you gotta just want and be willing to like continue to massage that 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 final to to really get it to where you want it to be. So yeah, it's mm -hmm. not easy. Yeah, it's not easy at all. And last time you were on, you were talking a little bit about people who copy what you do. Yeah, you know? and and um, is that getting more frequent? Are you getting more people who are copying you? And are they copying you exactly? Or are they copying your style? And like, what's the difference? And are they doing the blobbies? <laughs> The blobbies. I, I, <laughs> the you blobbies. know, it's um, it's kind of something that I, I feel like I've grown and my mindset is completely changed from. So if you hear any of the earlier podcasts where I chat about it, and I've chatted about it before and pretty passionately too at times. Um, and you know what the weird thing is, is like I almost feel like it was my ego kind of talking a little bit where, you know, I'd see it's like, hey man, they ripped that for me or hey, that's like my style or hey, that's my composition. That's my color palette. That's this. Like I came up with mm. that and it's like, you know like the craziest thing about the whole thing is it's like then I look at it and I realize it's like well I took that from somewhere else or like I got you <laughs> right. know what I mean like well I did kind of yeah, steal and this so, myself and so, so like, I guess it's okay. yeah what I'm like what point am I actually trying to like push here because you know I I, I see that as like, I'm like, oh, I took that from somewhere and they took it from me. And then and then it's just like, you know, I, I feel like that was kind of a bad message that I was putting out there. And everyone can have their own difference of opinion on it. And I'm cool with that. But at a certain point, I'm like, I'm not doing that anymore, man. If someone likes the style that I'm doing, if someone likes the, the composition mm -hmm. and they want to rock and do the same thing go for it you know what i mean like yeah. figure it out learn it make yourself better you know if if you 
if your sole dedication is to like emulate my page for the rest of your life, like that's kind of messed up. <laughs> but you know, if you yeah, if you go right. through like a one month period and you're like, yo, look at this this guy's work or look at this girl's work, yeah, uh, I, I want to make I want to see if I can make stuff like that. Like you know what, go for it. Like I I don't want to yeah. be I don't want to be that person that like you're like oh I can't touch I can't touch that style because like then he, that person's gonna say that I'm copying off of them. It's like that's right. not cool. Like so what you can never no one can ever do the stuff that I do because I did it. It's like, that's stupid. Like, I feel yeah. like artists that are doing that are actually, um, or that were like me, are, are actually doing a disservice to everybody else. It's like, you know, and, and we all have heard like imitation is the greatest form of flatter, flattery, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like, to an extent that that's true. It doesn't make it easier when you see, and I get the opposite side because like I said, I spoke very passionately about it of like, well, you know, I, I came up with it and they copied it. I've got, and we go back to the stupid likes and followers and it's like, I got 10 likes and they copied <laughs> what I did and they've got 10,000. And like, I understand yeah. that that's, that can be a tough pill to swallow, but like you're looking at the uh, very short sighted and it's like, you know, they're only copying you. You're, you're creating trends, you're creating new movements. And like, then like, why would that style be the only thing that you could ever create? And if you find yourself as an artist that it's like, that's the only style you can cre- create like you should probably check yourself on being an artist and and start playing with more styles and mixing it up i think we should be promoting mm-hmm. other artists to to dabble and, and and mess around with different people's styles it's like so what if i do like a, a a badass like landscape with like futuristic stuff and put a person in it like everyone's gonna just write hey you're copying off of people and, it, and it's like all right, so what? I can never do that now. You know what I mean? And Mike yeah. would probably be the first to say, like, well, his reference and like, and I've seen many things like original concept art from like Star Wars and stuff like that that is not too far off. But he's given his own flavor, and it's like, but it's like people forget like the past. I remember I was doing a whole series, um, and I hadn't watched Stranger Things yet, and I got tons of like, oh, this looks just like Stranger Things, looks like Stranger Things, and I was like, oh, I have not seen one episode yet, and actually, I was copying a shot from Close Encounters from Steven Spielberg, and and, and then, and then, lo and behold, I was like, well, I gotta watch Stranger Things, and so I watched it, and I was like, uh, uh uh-huh, I see, they just, like, they're copying off of the shows that I grew up with, you know what I mean? And that's on purpose for the nostalgia. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And so, and I'm just like, you know what? Like, yes. Like, uh, or homage, a cop- even. Yeah, and so, like, I'm I'm happy they could make Stranger Things because Steven Spielberg made E.T. or whatever they're they're deriving some of their imagery from. Um, mm-hmm. Or any, or Goonies. Or, like, the whole vibe is like that, right? And then it's like, so yeah. what? I'm going to just knock on Stranger Things before because Goonies came out first? It's like, nah, come on, stop. I don't know why we're doing the same thing. It's like, let's just keep, keep reinventing art and embrace each uniqueness for what it is. Like, someone will put a different spin on it. If not... Like they're not going to sustain themselves as an artist. They're going to have to show that they can do something original at some point. So, yeah, there's well, uh, and there's a line too that is different for everybody. Yeah, you know, like uh, again, apply it to audio. I, I'm obviously going to have some some influences if I'm doing audio that come from the stuff that I listen to, like Dead Mouse, and yeah. of course, you know, like the Serum plugin. I'm using the Serum plugin, which is, you know, super Dead Mouse. Yeah. You know, and and yeah. some of the stuff that I've practiced on, though, that here's the thing: like, I I would never post because all I was doing was trying to emulate something that Dead Mouse was doing, just so I could learn how to create it. But I'm not going to post. I'm never going to post that anywhere. You know, because I just want to see, okay, how would I set up this synth to do this and sound like this thing? But that's my line. But everybody has their own line. I've probably said it before. If you're if you're watching something and there's nudity in it. Mm-hmm. Some people would call it nudity or tasteful nudity. Somebody, some, some people would call it porn, even though maybe it's not porn to you. Maybe it's just nudity, like an art book. You know, someone has mm-hmm. an art book with a bunch of naked statues in it. You know, that's, oh, that's pornography, you know, or maybe it's just art. There's a line that everybody has. So when it comes to like, you know, looking at something and saying, hey, is that influenced by this or is that copying? Mm-hmm. That's where that's why I think it's so hard to define. Everybody has a different idea of what that line is. Yeah. Yeah. I think music is a really good kind of analogy for it too, just because it's like, I love hip hop and like one of hip hop's biggest things is sampling 
songs and like you know Kanye West for example like lots of his like mm-hmm. greatest songs it's like oh he just sampled a bunch of other stuff and like and it's Ray like Charles. Oh, yeah and yeah. just mixed it up in his own unique way and it's like are we really going to kill that are we really going to kill that possibility of being able to chop stuff up I mean let's bring up uh, Winkleman again too right I mean he's he, mm-hmm. Lots of and he's straight up. He's like, "Hey, I don't really make a lot of the stuff anymore. I'm I'm using I'm, I'm ripping stuff from here. I'm ripping stuff from here, and I mash it together. And yet, yeah. there's still no one else's work that he's copying from. It's yeah. just he's using a bunch of pieces from a bunch of different things, and and then it's his original piece, <laughs> right? And that's that's it's awesome. like getting a whole like a whole bunch of people getting a the, the same uh, box of a Lego set. And everybody does something different yeah. with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like, you, no one's stealing from anybody else. It's like, well, we all were given the same pieces, you know? Or this was is our that, reference. Does it, I, I feel cheap doing that sometimes. Yeah, I mean. And I know I shouldn't, but. I, I, I do it occasionally. I, I, I typically make everything myself still, but I get the idea of like, like why it's not really relevant and there's some stuff like i'm mm-hmm. like I'm, i made like a weird creature is called hydra leech and i made them on like a fire hydrant and i'm like okay i know how to make a model of fire hydrant and i'm like but i really only have four hours to do this thing and mm-hmm. that's like texturing lighting setting up my renders and walking away from my computer and mm-hmm. making and making an animation making this thing feel alive and i'm like i'm i went online found a model for three dollars a fire hydrant all I the yeah. model was the chain i think i've bought that yeah, model was, before. all i had to make model was the <laughs> chain i'm like three like that's not worth my time i'm sorry it's just not worth yeah, my time yeah, to sit yeah. there and model it and it has nothing to do it's like saying to a, like a photographer like they take a picture of like a still life and they're like did you grow those flowers did you make that vase and they're like no i i, I bought the flowers at a store and the vase was sitting here <laughs> in the studio and people are like well no mm-hmm. that's not real then it's not real art you needed to make yeah. that and it's like what no one says that it's like this is a yeah. this is a new age of like creating artwork and digital form of art you know we're not mixing our own paint you know like from pigments it's like we're buying this stuff it's like no one's well some people are probably stretching their own custom canvases but you know but like in actuality it's like we're all buying this stuff no one's growing their own like hemp and weaving canvas i don't canvas isn't made out of hemp but i don't know <laughs> <laughs> and tokyo says just don't take credit for everything and don't actively try to mislead people i think that's yeah that's good advice by making them think that yeah. you did all that work you made this yeah. i yeah, made i this. think it's more important for <laughs> like that aspect and again obviously it's all my opinion i think that's more important for like young artists like artists that because that's misleading to a client or a studio that wants to hire someone right so if you're coming directly out of if this is what tokyo mega place is uh referring to if you're coming like directly out of college and i look at your reel and you've got models of cars and like zipping down a road and all this stuff and but you actually didn't make it I'm assuming that that you made that, right? And so, yeah, I think it's very important. But if you're at a spot in your career where it's like, well, I can model a car, it's gonna take me probably like two weeks of fully sitting there or more modeling this car. Well, like, so I'm not being totally misleading and I don't feel like I need to credit like, any any like 3d model uh, companies online but and be like yeah, hey yeah. i got this model from here it's like i'm not <laughs> yeah. writing that you know i've done a handful of projects yeah. for like dodge and toyota and like and they gave us the car model and i've never put yeah. in there that they gave us the car model it's like i think it's important if you can't do something that you you credit someone else it's like you know especially as a young artist because most of the things you probably can't do so i think it's very important to do that yeah my two cents on it but like <laughs> i'm not gonna go and put on the my hydro leech thing i did not model this fire hydrant it's like psh, that has nothing to do with my piece man it's got nothing to do with it <laughs> yeah. and if you really want me to i can model it so if someone hired me and they're like you have to model a fire hydrant, i'll model a fire hydrant that's fine um and so yeah. i'm not i'm not misrepresenting my abilities that's kind of how i feel at least then you say yeah. you want me to model a fire hydrant you're wasting your exactly. time because I can go buy it for three dollars. Yeah, you're gonna pay yeah. me hundred dollars an hour. Your management skills yeah. are not very good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And and that would be you know the right thing to do is say hey you know you're gonna spend I, I'm gonna put a whole day in modeling this fire hydrant or we could buy it for three dollars. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Yeah. For less than the price of coffee, a cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A cup of coffee a day. <laughs> well, let's switch gears a little bit. I'm, I am got kind of another topic, but I wanted to 
roll it into our links for today. Links, today's links, today's links, today's links. Today's links. Today's links. I've got a, <laughs> a, uh, it's, it's a show I listen to all the time, heavily influenced by it. It's called Back to Work with Marlon Mann and Dan Benjamin. Matt, I know you've listened to a couple of them here and there. Yeah. You know. Ah, it's okay. Um, it's, it's really weird for me because I feel like he always says something that's relative or relevant to my life at the time that I need it. It's just, you know, I've listened to every episode and uh i really really enjoy it i like merlin man a lot and um they were having this conversation the other day and uh so the reason this is a link is because i think it would be beneficial to people to listen to episode 426 gosh i can't believe they've had that many episodes um what episode are we on <laughs> we're on 184 right now it's Sweet. above your head just look up <laughs> just just look up MoGraph Podcast 184. There it is. Now, uh, so this is an idea that's been floating around by a lot of people, which is the the idea, the concept that any task that you can do is is usually about 20 minutes, and your attention span is about 20 minutes, with the exception of this podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, there, there's a lot of things throughout your day that are 20 minutes, and and the idea that like there's something about the brain and its idea of what 20 minutes is, as opposed to like, okay, if if someone says if someone says we're gonna go eat at this place down the street, it's only 20 minutes from your house. It's like this magic spot where you're like, that's 20 minutes. That's not too bad. But if somebody says it's 25 minutes from your house, you're like, oh, it's almost 30 minutes, you know, <laughs> and so and that's it, like half an hour. Yeah. Half an hour. That's a long time. <laughs> that's a long time. It'll take me half an hour to get back. So that's an hour of my day just driving. Yes. But if, if it's 20 minutes, no worries. You don't even think about it. And But it applies to a lot of things. There's even these like uh, task programs and stuff, you know, to do type programs that will actually do timers and everything is set to 20 minutes. I'm going to do 20 minutes of this and then I'm going to do 20 minutes of that. And it was just an interesting talk because it's something that a lot of people are heading toward right now in everything. Like when it comes to a to-do list and categorizing stuff on your to-do list, I, I have tried to simplify my to-do lists over the last year, but I still feel like I'm overdoing some of my personal pieces in my to-do list when it comes to small tasks. So let's say um, I have to email a guy about something. I still put it on my task list. I still categorize it to where it needs to go. I still give it... Um, a a like hashtag like what is this this is uh emailing someone as opposed to going and running an errand or whatever i spend all this time like categorizing this task to email somebody that probably takes almost as long as it does to do the actual email so for me i think i'm going to start putting things in my inbox and just write it and not categorize it anywhere um and unless it's more than 20 minutes you know, because things that take more than 20 minutes to accomplish are, are tasks that are bigger tasks, like do a render for a client, you know, work on this thing. And if that's the case, okay, I'm going to categorize this project and I'm going to do sub headings in there and I'm going to do all that because it takes more than 20 minutes. But if it's just invoice someone, I'm going to put it in the inbox and it's just going to sit there until I check it off rather than be like super, super, like I'm, I'm way too like anal about it and i need to because it's taking me too much time so i would check it out um back to work episode 426 they compare it to workout intensity so if you're gonna go work out do you go to the gym and just bam you're going you know 100 miles an hour on a treadmill and then you do that for like two hours no you probably maybe go you in, don't yeah <laughs> You warm up a little bit, maybe you you lift, bro, <laughs> and you know you you kind of maybe you do a little warm up. Let's say you're going jogging compared to to jogging and running. You're not just gonna like go out the door and just start sprinting. You know you're gonna do this warm up stuff. So like when I sit at my desk in the morning and I get my coffee, I start doing a couple things. I check my tasks, whatever it is. I'm warming up. And then, bam, I'm working on a project really hard for like 20 minutes. And no doubt someone's going to email me, call me, whatever it is. And the theory is that 20 minutes is the magic number where your head is just going to kind of 
fizzle out a little bit. Now, I say me, I would have to say me personally. Sometimes I'll get in the Cinema 4D, and I'm just like, I'm I'm in it, you know. And like three, four hours later, I come back and I'm like, oh, what happened? That's you know, after you've gotten like a, a fever loose. dream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but, um, as far as like other tasks, I, th- I think it's a good thing to look at and say, okay, I'm going to work on this for 20 minutes and I'm going to take a break and then I'm going to come back to it or I'm going to go to another task and just divide it up. Um, and, and you're doing that with your brain. My, uh, my nap cycle, 20 minutes, you know, yeah. take a quick 20 minute nap, nap. Yeah. I usually Matt drink nap. beer for 20 minutes before I go to scotch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then 20 minutes of scotch followed yeah. by <laughs> another 20 minutes of scotch. 20, yeah, 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 yeah. Just a different yeah. label. That's funny. 20 minutes yeah. of cigar. <laughs> a, different, a different kind yeah. of scotch. Yeah. Right. That's funny. 20 years. A 20 year scotch and 20 minutes. Yeah. Uh, so, anyway, other links that I have. I saw the Twitter post where Aaron Coverett is working on some, some foliage. Gosh. Oh, okay, the foliage one. I thought you were talking yeah. about the uh, the substance painter where he's he's using like particle paints to make wet maps. In order to I paint seen this. wet maps. Yeah, oh, he, that kid's ridiculous, this. man. Insane. That guy is out of his mind. I I like every time I see him post something about substance designer, I'm just like, I need to get more into this. But then I'm like, ah, I've got a. He's really good though. Well, well, he's <laughs> really good. And what a like generally yeah. nice yeah. individual too. Like. Um, yeah, he is. I, he, him and I are both doing a. I think I can. Show, him and I are both doing a, a project with Intel. We're probably chatting a little bit about it, NAB. <laughs> but it, aren't we all? Yeah, yeah, we all are. <laughs> Apparently, yeah, we've been chatting about. <laughs> oh, the, you guys are yeah, too. Yeah, I think you can. Well, it's a different project, oh, okay. but we were talking about the fact that we were both working on Intel projects at oh, the same nice. time. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but I can't wait to see what it is that he he, he showed me like a little preview at NAB. I'm like, dude, you got to be kidding me, man. <laughs> this is like ridiculous <laughs> uh but very mm-hmm. very raw talented person so but yeah the yes, uh is. i did see the foliage thing he's gonna get snatched but i almost feel like the yeah. full fo- like what matt was referring to about the the wet mass was and substance was even cooler than the the foliage thing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you got if you haven't yeah, yeah uh, dave you got to check out the the wet yeah where yeah, was that by the way it's on his Twitter, like par- yeah particle painting and uh it was just awesome like particle painting's been around apparently forever, you know. Yeah, look them and up. Someone was see. pointing out uh, that uh, that you could use it for like like creating like grunge, you know. Like someone had done a like a smokestack and had like the the soot come down from the top. It was mm. pretty neat. Yeah, yeah. I'm bringing them up here. Uh, let's see, A A Ron. Yeah, I've been, been showing a lot of my um, my Cinema 4D students. Uh, his site because it's just like a really good reference to of just like you know he hasn't been doing it for all that long you know that was super cool yeah that was cool too. like that one like using what is it you're using something what's he using anchor uh, points anchor points to drive material layering huh gosh that's insane and he's just painting on different yeah there's the wet look yeah. at that that is insane what right right Dave's like, ah, crap. What? Now I got. Now we're gonna have to renew our substance painter. Yeah. Licenses. Oh, we already did a couple months ago. We did. I think so. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Sweet. I'm yeah, excited. Yeah. When I was working <laughs> with some textures and stuff after I saw the presentation that Chad Ashley gave at DFWC 4D, I think I think I renewed at least one of our licenses. So wow. man, <sighs> isn't that cool? So, so much stuff to learn. Somebody right. pay me just to learn stuff for All right, fun, please. You learn substance, I'll learn who does. <laughs> yes. All right. I'll be a great R and D guy. We'll call I swear. Good. Can I? I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do a little shout out to the guys at Intel because they've been super, super fun to work with. I don't know if you guys are working with the same ones, JP and Benjamin. Super, super. No, fun. we're we're so. an eight. We're, we were working with Ariev, who was with an agency who was working with them. So we're uh, well, okay, a yeah. bit removed. Um, the they, they hooked me up with a, a machine, an Intel machine, and it, and like the current machine I have is, is pretty fast, but they hooked me up with a, it was all CPU based project and it was four times faster, uh, for, for some of the renders I was doing on the machine wow. they gave me. And wow. my, my, my other machine that Jeez. I used, I thought was pretty powerful. I was like, oh my gosh, it was, it was How nuts. many cores? Uh, 64. <sighs> 
man. Yeah. And they, yeah. did they did you get to keep it? Oh, it's mine. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it's mine. Uh, and you're like, I didn't make any money on the job, but I got this sweet computer. <laughs> Straight <laughs> hustling, bro. They, they were they were super, super nice, but um but the computer itself is super baller and it's got a, a 2080 ti in it um and uh and it's so small because i just moved recently and i'm lugging my big machines everywhere and they're i mean they're all water cooled and like it's i'm like this thing's got to be like a hundred and something pounds um the one they gave me <laughs> it's got to be like uh like five inches width or less four inches width and it's it's tiny it's like two shoe boxes stacked on vertically on top Jeez. of each other it's nothing like man mm, i gotta insane. get all new machines now i'd like these small computers that are way powerful yeah. uh, i yeah, found is I'll, uh, I'll let them know if uh intel needs any extra work <laughs> you know i'd be happy to work for a machine yes <laughs> yeah but it was it was a very very fun fun little project that that we did it, it'll be coming out somewhat soon um i don't i th i think it's okay for me to kind of share but yeah i mean just just pay close like I'll, I'll be i'll be sharing stuff I, I won't say it right now just in case i'm not supposed to but like <laughs> stuff will be happening uh for everyone to get access to this stuff that I'm cool cool yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah, the foliage stuff you were just showing looks really cool. I think yeah. what is he creating like an actual pack of stuff? I think looks it's like a plug-in, it. I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, that remember at NAB he did that he he had like the corn that he made and like he yeah. had it all mm -hmm. like a lot of it was like procedurally driven and stuff like that and he was like showing somebody and like I was just kind of lurking over his shoulder. Um huh. and then I was like, "Dude, you need to you could sell that. Like that that should be a plug-in." And he's like looks over at me, he's like you think so? I'm like, yeah. Like, what? You did all yeah. the work. It's all on these sliders. Like, s sell that, man. Like, people would buy yeah. that for sure. Yeah, he's he's posted his photography process too. I think he's uh, he's basically kind of doing. There's a, a video for Substance that shows how to set up your own like cameras and lighting and just to get your normal maps and everything else. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Look at all this foliage. Yeah. <laughs> Foilage. 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 <laughs> I can't escape Lisa, my little walking library. <laughs> Say it right. <laughs> chow uh, chow Say it right. It's chowder. Chow I'm chow going to enjoy this. <laughs> <laughs> so other links that I've got. Oh, let's talk about the Mac Pro, quote unquote, leak. Yeah, let's do it. Leak. Do it. So, let's, let's do, it. Uh, do you think? First of all, do you think show this the picture? Is do you think it's real? Yeah, I'm looking it up here so I can bring it up. I'm uh, gonna say, here's the thing. It looks cool. Mm -hmm. It looks very nice. Um, it uh, it has an Nvidia card in it, so I highly doubt that it's real. Right. Because I first thing I, can, I noticed. I I'm gonna put. I will put a hundred dollars down right now. All right. Remember this episode, episode 184, when the modular Mac Pro comes out, I am calling $100 and I'm going to win $100 because they will not put an NVIDIA card in, uh, in the new Mac Pro. I don't even think they will allow an NVIDIA card in there. Yeah, contractually, maybe they even can't at this point. I don't yeah. know. You know, whatever deal they have. This says Intel Xeon W Cascade Lake X which I'm assuming that's some sort of newfangled something or other uh, that yeah, Intel's working on. Uh, Apple T2 security chip, Apple X2 accelerator. Well, I don't even know what that is. Uh, okay. Three times double wide PCI E4 slots. Hmm. Hmm. But here's the thing. It says single or dual AMD Fire Pro X and NVIDIA Quadro RTX BTO. Now, why would both of them be in there? Both. <laughs> why, why would both be listed? Single or dual AMD Fire Pro X? Why would no you have idea. a Fire Pro and a Quadro? I and why a Quadro know. even? Is that... And, and is it going to be... If it was, would it be modular, What's like, uh, you know, Apple proprietary 
yeah. Quadro just for this box. Can can you can uh, you guys explain to me because I was on the Apple bandwagon for so long and being like that's the only computer that's good. PC suck, and then it's just like I, I just I don't understand the thought process of like why you would spend the money on like if you're doing this as a profession, it's like why why would you spend mm-hmm. the money? I just don't understand why you spend the money on on it's, on the Mac it's Pro reference. But that's so you know, stupid. You're, gonna, for you're, you're basically I yeah, but some people don't mind spending the money. Yeah, but like I, you, you just mm-hmm. get faster machines and more of them. Like, and then like, and then you just like make more money by doing that. I I just don't understand that mindset of just like, yeah. I don't. I, I just don't get it. Well, we were talking to EJ about this the other day. He's still waiting. He's still waiting for for yeah. this or whatever. And I'm like, it's ridiculous. Well, yeah, but yeah, but, but here's you could the thing. So here's the thing about more. EJ. EJ is doing a lot of a lot of teaching work. You know, right? So he doesn't necessarily he need a huge machine and stuff like that. Right. Which is understandable. You know, like if if I didn't need a GPU or whatever, if I didn't need a, you know, like six GPUs, I mean, I could see myself working off of an iMac, you know, Mm -hmm. as long as I bumped up the specs and stuff like that in order to for the the processor to be fast enough, you know, I mean, you're going to spend what, five, 10 grand on an iMac and it comes with the the big 5K thing. I've worked on them. They're very nice. I love, I love, you know, and it's all about personal preference as far as operating system but for me i spend two okay. grand and i get a brand new pc like super maxed out but know, if that's the case all you I need is upgrade, a laptop you know yeah yeah <laughs> and know, like, i mean like, i still prefer the mac os like i still prefer a lot of things about apple yeah. but it just from from a business standpoint i just don't understand how yeah. anyone can make make that decision like the operating system like yes i still prefer mac over the pc operating system but it's not all that different i got i, I really feel that like it's like you know jump I, I jump from windows to mac every single day almost and it's not that it's every really not day. that different yep <laughs> every every single <laughs> day <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I mean, well, we'll hopefully see. they come well, out with something cool. I'm just, I just feel at this point they they lost me. You know what I mean? Like what, whatever yeah. they come out with is gonna be cool because Apple makes they make cool products. You know, hey, if like, they hook me up with one for free, maybe the, I'll change my. Yeah, mind. there you go. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. they're really expensive. Yeah. You know, yeah. but they're cool products. They're cool. They're built with quality. You know? the, yeah, yeah, I get it. I, yeah, but but. I, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a pain. You have to work within their ecosystem and their, you know, whatever. But and I feel like I'm done with companies whatever. that do that just in general. I hate that when I feel like I'm like, I'm like, yeah. okay, I bought this and now I'm locked into only using. Yep. Mm-hmm. You're locked and loading. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm locked into, I'm locked into the Oculus Rift ecosystem, yeah, you, you know, yeah. which by the yep. way, mine is coming this week. Ooh. I'm so excited to try it out. Um, but I'm not necessarily upset that I'm locked into it. And I guess that's because I have the option to also use Valve or, or whatever it is. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Steam. Mm-hmm. You know, Steam VR. And um, <laughs> never stop talking about Breaking Bad or The Wire. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> but I love you, Kevin. <laughs> uh, with, with Apple, that God, me. you're just so locked in. And um, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like... Uh, um, I don't feel locked in anymore, you know, when, when you had Final Cut and all of that stuff, it's just, and then you get the apps in the app store and all that. You, you don't want to switch because you're going to have to spend money to get the same program yeah. equivalent on the PC. And that is a process, I understand, but there's a point where you've just got to let it, you got to let it go. And I, I think this is going to be the breaking point for so many people. Um, and I, I'm guessing they would probably announce it, I don't know. Uh, I think they're going to announce it in this, June. Uh, in June. No, I, I, th- I think they'll wait. September's the iPhone. I think they're going to, you're going <laughs> to, you're going to do it and they're going to do it in September. You know? What about, I think they'll don't do they it, usually do it June? Do, maybe. Yeah, yeah. For the, for the iPhone or, I, I don't know. Well, September's think, the iPhone. No, June is the, uh, uh, developers, right? Worldwide developers conference. Developers, right. developers. They may. Developers, developers. They may. <laughs> But if they're going to, they won't release it before next year. You know, mm-hmm. it, it's, if it's going to come out, it's going to come out next year. Yeah. I just okay. can't believe a hundred dollars says this long. no, no NVIDIA GPU and it's not going to come out till next year. Hmm. All right. Well, other, 
Links I have here, number one is Prying by uh, our friend Mark Thorson. He uh, just did this as, I think, just a for fun piece. So I'll post a link to that. And also, Matt, you posted a link to something called Houdini Nerd. Oh, yeah, that's Tokyo Megaplex's new thing. Oh, is it? Oh, man, yeah. see, I haven't been on the Slack so, today. HoudiniNerd.com. If you go to HoudiniNerd.com, he's got a ton of, like, Houdini resources and stuff. Really? So, yeah, there's, like, seven pe- eight people on there right now. Oh, it's a Google Doc. Out. 13. Yeah, it's just a big Google Doc. Oh, and wow. he's got a whole bunch of, like, Dude, great places awesome. that you can learn Houdini, you know, uh, some beginner links. Uh, after you get acquainted with the interface and some more basics and stuff, and then miscellaneous one-off useful tutorials. It's pretty cool. He's going to have to add uh, Houdini Marks class when we launch that this fall. I am so excited about this class. Yeah. I'm so excited about it. I'm so excited. His his class is just, like, he's already recorded a chunk of it, and I'm starting to kind of, you know, get an edit going, and I'm... I'm so excited because I'm going to learn Houdini while I'm editing it. Oh, yeah. You're so. gonna, you'll have it down. <laughs> Dude, I, I'll tell you what. I've jumped into Houdini a few times over the past like week or two, and it's, it's, not, it's not as intimidating as I thought it was going to well, be. Well, it won't be if you, you do Mark's class, that's for sure. His whole goal on it is right. to make it so it's not intimidating, like easily like transferable yeah. from like, okay, you're a Cinema 4D artist and you want to pick up Houdini. These are the steps like to take to make it not scary yeah. at all. I think it's gonna be sick because mm-hmm. that's what always thing yeah. that like throws me off. It's like you want to jump in and you want to do all this stuff and like, oh, you got to code this or you got to. It's like, oh, that's not. Maybe I don't want to start. It's like every everybody's like idea when they jump into three D, they're like want to model the most complex thing. It's like, no, let's just oh, t- talk about what yeah. you know already and build from there. And so yeah. that's yep. what I think that's what he's really gonna do very yeah, well. You don't want to model a car. You want to model exactly. A yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what vops and mops and yeah socks and. Tops? I saw a really, Fox. I saw a really good tutorial. Like, if you click on the tutorials part on the the Houdini Apprentice or whatever the free version, they go over a lot of that stuff. You mm-hmm. know, like I did some about just smoke and uh, uh, v- Voronoi fracture and uh, uh, what Vop sops mops, <laughs> bibbity bops. Yes. You know <laughs> what they were. And so it makes more sense once you realize, you know. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Cool. Well, I'll put a link to that in the show notes. Uh, there's two different Gumroad things I wanted to bring up. Number one is Travis Davids came out with uh, 100 Tileable Displacement and Alpha Patterns Part 2. Yeah. So go check that out. Looks really cool. Um, and then... French Monkey. French French Monkey is selling those on his site, right? I don't know. I believe. Uh, French Monkey is selling um, Observer Dole, Do- Dowell's new thing called Hard Surface Tiles Volume 1. These are two separate oh, things. Oh, never mind. Yeah. Two separate. Two, okay. two separate gum roads. My bad. Um, but go check those out and uh, throw some money their way if that's something you want. But now it's time for Beeple's People. Beeple's People. Real quick, before we do that, um, mm-hmm. did you see Merck's new plugin that he's working on? Yes, the Greebles. The, the Greeble what is one? it, the Poly Greeble or something like that? Yes. Holy crap, that looks awesome. Yeah. That guy's amazing. Too. I, I had yeah, that yeah. in the notes, but I figured I'd wait until it was. Because it's not out, out yet, is it? Yeah. Or is it? Um, no, I don't yeah. think it was out. Yeah. I saw Ryan Summers posted it, and it's just like. Yeah, it cool. looks really incredible. Um, okay, well now it's my right. turn. That's my that's my my cue. All right, to use the bathroom See real quick. <laughs> all right, we're gonna start Beeple's people, and so take out your Beeple viewer of choice. I'm going to Twitter and typing in Beeple. Easy enough at Beeple, or if you're on Instagram, it's Beeple underscore crap. Beeple crap. He is on a freaking roll this week. Let me tell you, I couldn't even choose because there were so many good ones. Um, so, you know, we may just just uh, briefly just look at the other ones from the week as well. But the first one that we're actually going to look at is May 13th, Year of Our Lord 2019. And this one is called Secret Weapon. And I know exactly where he's going with this. Because as soon as I saw it, I thought... Uh, I thought American Tale, 
And then just now I noticed Secret Weapon. This has to be. D- did you watch American Tale? No. Five Old Mouskowitz? Back in the 80s? Oh, the yeah, Spielberg yeah, yeah, movie? yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember the end? Ruiz the Secret Weapon. Yeah, 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 of course. The first thing I thought when like, I saw this, because it was the giant mouse. With the with the chains and stuff on it, they built it out oh, of like yes. you know like old socks and things like that. That's why I wish I'll ask Matt because he probably knows we're we're pretty good on the uh, the eighties culture and junk. I I completely forgot about that movie until you just named it now. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I I used to, I, I had a Five Mouse style too. Mm-hmm. And then there's part two. Yeah. Five goes west. Yeah! 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 Yeah. So this is really cool. He's been doing all of the God, look at the look at the size of the tank. So so one of the things with scale that you don't notice at first is you see the general standing there, whatever he is. But this is like a high platform. Like look at the people down there mm-hmm. and the size of the tank in comparison yeah. with the the Mickey Mouse head. So um, I'll ask Matt because he's back from from taking a PP break. <laughs> Uh, do you, yes. you watch, what is, what's the first thing you think of when you see this? Um, that Netflix is keeping hold of Mickey Mouse or Mickey Mouse is getting loose from Netflix. It's because, uh, 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 Disney decided to cancel their contract with Netflix and they're starting their own streaming service, you know? Oh, you know? oh, oh, I see where you're yeah. going with this. So this is yeah, the... Yeah, it's because, you know, Mike watches nothing but Fox News and CNN on two gigantic 65-inch <laughs> TVs in his office. So they're probably talking about, you know, Netflix and uh, Disney's new streaming service. Right. Which, did you hear that uh, uh, Disney basically bought the rest of uh, Comcast's uh, stake in Hulu? So now, yes. in, so now Disney's not only going to have its own streaming service, but it's also going to own Hulu as well. It's, it's insane. Like, it's absolutely right. insane. But Disney owns the world, bro. But what we were they talking about, bro. 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 <laughs> they but, own everything. But they, it's insane. Yeah. When you start seeing the list, they even like own most of like Universal now too. Yeah. It's like <laughs> they they bought all all the com the, all the comic stuff there. It's like it's nuts. Man. We're gonna it's, need yeah. an entertainment bailout if they ever fail. They're too right? big to fail. Yeah. We'll have no entertainment <laughs> yeah. left. So oh, here's man. the thing we were talking about while you were peeing is have you seen an American Tale? I was European. Have I seen what? American Tale. Heck yeah. Ruiz, the secret weapon <laughs> release the secret weapon <laughs> and it's called secret weapon i'm telling you there's oh, a reference that's pretty here. good yeah okay i could see that yeah i could see that gotta be gotta be if not that's there are no big. caps oh, in america and the streets are paved with cheese <laughs> All right, I'm going to have to remix that, too. Is it? Um, oh, God. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, anyway, never mind. Amy and I fight all the time over what, what the actual lyrics to that song are, because I say paved with cheese, and she said made with cheese. No, it's paved with cheese. It's paved, yes. Yeah. I know. So you know can that. set your mind at ease. <laughs> yeah. She also thinks, she also thinks that uh, the, uh, the words to, uh, what is it, Africa? Uh, something when they talk about uh, Mount Olympus, you know, she thinks it's talking about a female leopard, a leprous. <laughs> I'm like, no, that's not a thing. That's just not a thing. A leprous. All right. <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> All right. Sorry. The next one, May 14th, is called Stand Still. Yeah. And this is just gorgeous. It is a gorgeous render. Yeah. yeah. You want to know my story behind it? Sure. Let's hear it. It's because space, space, space renders are gone. Like, where's the latest space, space, space render? What's going uh, on? It's left in the dust. You know, it's out there all by, you know, gathering dust and getting spider webs on it. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. No one's then. doing space, space, space anymore. Uh, for now, it'll come for back now. around like everything else does. Right. Uh, but yeah. I just but thought I, I this was the, a great one. I love the halo render or the, yeah. the, the rainbow halo. And that the looks backlighting. Awesome. So good. Yeah. Super cool. Yeah, I wonder what he did for the um, 
the spider webs if they're just splines or if he kind of had these i or... think there's there's a spider web generator online that i've actually Ooh. used before let me see if <laughs> i can find it real quick yeah i think he got his hands Tokyo. on a spider web generator because when he did a couple days ago he's got the spider webs too so i yeah. think he's having some fun with it uh tokyo see. says more like astronaut web. am i right octane jesus <sighs> is dead he uh, died for your valkyrie. samples valkyrie valkyrie has a spider web preset for c4d um uh, let me see, Spiderweb C4D, there we go, here, all, it's in A scripts, okay, so A scripts has it, it's free, and it, I, I've used it before, it's super easy to use and makes really cool looking spiderwebs, so, oh, yeah. I can throw it in the dingus if you want to put it on the, uh, yeah, throw it in the dingus, the, the links, yeah, there for sure, all right, <clears throat> And um, now some of these I just want to just glance through, <laughs> even though it's not on the yeah. list, because he just had an amazing week. I mean, this young Yoda thing. He did thing, have a good week. Uh, yeah. He's got this whole painted thing going there. Uh, this one is on the list. This is May 16th. It's called Last Chapter. Yeah. He's been doing a lot of these uh, Game of Thrones inspired ones. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. This is really cool looking. And uh, I don't know. This, this almost looks like a samurai or something not yeah i don't know it's, maybe he was trying to go for the the white-haired chick you know yeah. i don't know her name what or maybe aria oh yeah, or uh, maybe yeah yeah it looks like yeah and uh gosh i mean so many good ones God, again yeah. this is on my list either H hard landing so good i mean look at the uh you got a 5g tower down here or something and you got uh <laughs> um it's short so you know just like colorado probably doesn't work very well <laughs> Um, hard landing is is that's just really pretty. The colors are great. Yeah, and the yeah. um, the he should have been awesome. crushing like sense of scale and perspective too. Like, yeah, he's ever since we started that. calling him out on it. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, and then again, he has one called Bad Day. Yeah. Freaking awesome! More spider webs. He's got finale from yesterday's yeah, Game of Thrones. Yeah. You know, I mean, just just awesome. Really yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh. Just, just too much to even go through in one episode. So, oh, and then he did something about like some video about yeah. Game he was of talking Thrones. about uh, he was talking about Game of Thrones, and he's like, if you didn't like, you know, all, all the people who were saying the ending was stupid, you know, why don't you put up what you think it should have been? And he went through and he did his ending, what he thinks it should have been. It was pretty fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess we can't do that though, right? No spoilers. Nah. nah. <laughs> Everyone lives. Right. Everyone who's died over the past eight seasons comes back to life. Gets that, that's the way. I can't yeah. believe they ended it that way. <laughs> yeah, it was nuts. It was weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Well, I think we're going to get out of here. That's pretty all much right. it. Uh, David, thanks for Sweet. being on. Super fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, Super fun to be on. Love it. We're going to get out of here. You can you can rate us on iTunes, leave a review, subscribe on your podcatcher of choice. Helps get our ratings up. You can say you've been there, done that, got the t-shirt with the MoGraph logo tee available on Amazon.com. The Paul Bab, Feel the Bab 2020 shirt. All the profits from that go to Doctors Without Borders. The Render Things shirt, hoodie, and long sleeve tee. And of course, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Periscope, YouTube, MoGraph.com. And David, where can people find you online? Lockedandloading.com, locked and loading on Instagram, locked and loading on Twitter. Easy where can enough. I get one of those sweet locked and loading t shirts? Ooh, I have to print them up, man. Those are all yeah. by hand for me. Oh, so really? I should, yeah. So uh, I want one. Yeah. And you can get the yeah, Amazon sure. thing going. Yeah, yeah, no, dude. after you told me that, I'm like, oh, wow, I, why, why do they make them by hand? I did it, like, <laughs> before SIGGRAPH, though. Like, I had no time at all. I thought about it really late. And, like, the night before I left for SIGGRAPH, I, I made them up real quick. And I was like, all right, well, they're done, so. Hmm. But, yeah. Well, yeah, we can. You we, guys will get them. We can, we can help you uh, get that going on Amazon if you want, if you don't Sick. have a. Hell, yeah. Um, all right, so we're going to get out of here. Um, yeah, subscribe, please. If, if you haven't already subscribed to the new MoGraph, Facebook, <clears throat> Instagram, mm -hmm. Twitter, all that stuff, especially the YouTube channel, because we won't broadcast on that forever. Um, yeah. I know a lot of people still watch on there, and uh, we're trying to transition everybody over. So just a reminder to sign up. Uh, help us get things going on the, the new channels. It's always hard to start something from scratch like that. So 
Very much appreciated. Yep. We got some fun stuff and coming down. Go go to meetups. Go to motion graphic meetups. They're so important for yeah. the industry. Mm-hmm. Important to network. Important for your career. Meet so many cool people. Learn so much yep. stuff. Um, and you know what's a really great meetup coming up in October? <laughs> Camp Mogra. Oh, yeah. Ding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for real. Yeah. yeah. No, but really, real. you only got like... 11 days left mm-hmm. uh, for that early bird pricing. So yeah. uh, go get yourself some uh, some tickets to Camp MoGraph. Find some people. Find some folks. Get a cabin. Or, you know, if you want to just go by yourself, you can get in a cabin or you can camp and stuff like that. It's going to be awesome. Mm-hmm. Yep. Go get a different experience. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I'll be doing it. So get out of your comfort zone with me. Right? Cool. We're going to make s'mores. I'm bringing like <laughs> a whole bunch of marshmallows and stuff. <laughs> nice. It's going to be fun. All right. Well, we're going to get out of here. Until next week, I'm Dave. And I'm Matt. I'm Dave. Have a good one. See you guys. Later, yo. It's pretty good, I guess.